Hey Squiggles, how are you doing? Hey Nasu, how are you? <sighs> so, we're still investigating. About your husband. <laughs> Isn't he the cutest? A bit weak sometimes, though. A bit? And by the way, did you know they mentioned Maya on TV? Huh? Really? They said you own the urn and that you're doing some shady training at a law office now. <clears throat> Tired, but Teber's model is coming along nicely. Nice. Also, give me a sec. I mean, not to watch that channel's news program. After I saw that, I thought it might be a good idea to meet the lawyer they mentioned. I see. My Ronnie, he has a powerful imagination and gets deluded easily. He kept insisting he was going to surrender to the police. I didn't know what to do. It was me, I stole that urn, he kept saying, as if it was even possible. Huh? But, are you saying he didn't? <clears throat> of course he didn't. Why would my Ronnie ever do something like that? Well, you know, it's a priceless treasure, and he's, you know... Is it possible his own wife doesn't know about his secret identity? Me? I'm the kind of woman that needs excitement in her life. Oh, excitement, huh? Yeah, I'm at my happiest when I'm racing along with my bike, going at full throttle. Riding a motorcycle is like putting your life on the line, you know what I mean? Well, I think that depends on how you ride it. I'm the type that can't stand living in a boring, dreary old life with no action. No offense, but your husband, Ron, doesn't exactly look like the risk-taking type himself. You're right about that. He's definitely not one for thrills and danger. But I do have to say that he makes up for it in other ways. Other ways? <laughs> Hard cut. Just other ways. How much farther did we get in the totally it wasn't Luke at me that did it case? Uh, not very. We got stuck for a little bit. <clears throat> yes, money. Ronnie is incredibly rich and super generous. He bought me a bike that's so fast it'd make your head spin. And shopping? I like to shop so much it makes Ron's head spin. The other day it actually happened. His head actually started to spin. Man, talk about a high-maintenance wife. <clears throat> and so, where does Mr. Delight get all his money from? Ronnie's a security guard. They put their lives on the line, right? So they get paid tons of money in return. Tons of it. He's a security guard? It's my turn for my head to spin. <laughs> he works the night shift at an old pizza place. <laughs> Can you tell us about what happened last night? Mm, what time did that incident take place again? What time was it again, Maya? Well, according to Detective Gumshoe, it was around 1.30 in the morning. Last night was horrible. I got pulled over. Pulled over? Yes, I always do my best flying at night. Flying? 
Uh, you're talking about your motorcycle, right? Yes. Anyway, last night I got pulled over by a policeman. Can't believe he caught up to me. It was a great chase, let me tell you. When he finally caught me, the poor man was as white as a sheet. It was about three in the morning when I actually got home. Sounds like, sounds like she's got an airtight alibi. Well, what about Mr. Delight? I don't really know. We weren't together at that time of night. But when I got home, he was already fast asleep. So, basically, he's got no alibi. Oh, that's so mysterious looking. I like old stuff I, li I love old stuff like this. Really? That's one of our most treasured possessions. There's going to be a whole exhibit at Lordly Taylor with these types of things. I look so happy. It's lit up like a thousand watt bulb. Terrific. You can count on Ronnie and me to be there. It sounds like fun. Huh? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Oops. Like that light bulb looks like that light bulb is starting to flicker. Um, so what do you know about this? No, you can't show her that, Nick. is top secret, don't you remember? Ugh, sorry about that. To be fair, Ron is also claiming to be Mask to Mask. The way, er, but the way she just said top secret was worse, was a worse giveaway than what I did. Oh, when I hear the word top secret, it just piques my interest like nothing else. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Ron Delight over here. He was absolutely still Luke then. Um. I know he doesn't look it, but he can really get things done when he puts his mind to it. Really? And so when exactly does he put his mind to it? Well, not very often, I'd admit. Exactly does Miss Delight see in her husband, anyway. Wow, you must have really seen Skyrockets when you first met to love him so much. Skyrockets? No people still use that word. As long as I've got my motorcycle and my Ronnie, I'm happy. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, that plus a little excitement and a little shopping money. Then I'm happy. Now she's starting to sound a bit greedy, don't you think, Nick? But would you take a look at this? Oh, I'm sorry. I haven't the faintest idea. I guess I just don't get out enough. Oh, that's so mysterious looking. I love old stuff like this. Oh, wait, this is the same thing. Hmm. I wonder if we're done here. Maybe I should present, like, Luke. Mask to mask. Um, Miss Delight, you must know, right? About your husband and mask to mask? Mask to mask? Of course I know all about it. <clears throat> My husband is his biggest fan. Yep. What? Huh? The biggest fan? Yes, and Ronnie can be pretty delusional sometimes. That's how this whole misunderstanding happened. 
Wait a minute. Did you say delusional? Yes, that's right. I just don't know what I'm going to do with him. You see, Ronnie actually believes that he is a mask to mask. Wh what What are you talking about? There we go. So, when did Ron first become Mask to Mask? <clears throat> what are you talking about? He's not Mask to Mask. Huh? But wait a second. Look around at this Look around at this room. This place is obviously Mask to Mask's hideout. No, no, you're totally wrong. The real thief's hideout wouldn't look like this. Because Ronnie's so timid himself, he looks up to heroic figures. Heroic figures, but Mask to Mask is a bad guy. So he's deluded, huh? Would that really be true? Anyway, if he really had stolen the urn, wouldn't he still have it? Well, I suppose so. Then why don't you ask him if he has the urn or not? She has a point. Mr. Delight isn't exactly the criminal type. Something about Ron's behavior bothers me. Maybe it's true. Maybe Mr. Delight isn't Mask to Mask after all. Say, can I ask you something, Nicky Boy? What is it? I know I may seem like a bad girl on the outside. But the one thing I won't stand for is illegal activity. I had the feeling you wouldn't. You're tough, but I can tell you've got a good heart. And somebody framed my poor Ronnie, I just know it. Um, could you give this to Ronnie for me? Er, a letter? Yeah, for Ronnie. I want him to fight back. Miss Delight. Okay, you've got it. Just relax and leave it all to us. <laughs> this isn't a Phantom Thieves hideout. It'll be someplace dingier, like a cafe or a public walkway or a rooftop. <laughs> Gosh, I do really like Desiree's design. Oh, that's right. Here, this is from your wife. Oh, from Desi? Thank you! Better given to mask to mask. Actually, more like taken. My dear Ronnie, how are you? I'm doing fine. It's clutching onto that letter so hard, the ink is gonna be squeezed out. You look so happy. You should write a letter to Mystic Maya too, Mr. Nick. Um, Mr. Lawyer? Yes? In the letter that Desi wrote, she said, Ask this guy to be your lawyer. Huh? Uh, um, I know this would be asking a lot, but... Could you please take my case? My trial starts tomorrow. Hey, hang on a second. He can't be your lawyer. Why not? What do you mean, why not? We're the victims in this case, right? Victims of this Damask guy! Well, yeah, but according to Desiree, he didn't do it. And she said, Poor man, he's th he's deluded himself into thinking he did it. Right, Mr. Nick? Come on, she should be- she could be lying to protect her husband. Well, that's true. Uh, actu er, no, actually not. Actually, it's hard to say. Oh no, it's spreading! No, oh, please! I'll give you the treasure of your choice in return! What should I do? Well, Mr. Delight, I've decided to give it a try. I'll defend you. Really? You will? Hey, what are you doing, Nick? He he's a thief! You can't trust him! Oh, he may be a thief, but I think there's more to this case than meets the eye. M mr Nick! I was wrong about you. I shouldn't have trusted you. 
Pearls? I can't believe you'd defend this person after what he did to Mystic Maya. I... I... I'll never forgive you, ever. Pearly, wait. This is going to be ugly. Uh, I'll go after her. Um, sorry about that. I didn't mean to cause any trouble. Well, you couldn't have known she'd react like that. Guess I might as well start investigating. Oh, Maya, where's Pearls? She said she's going back to the office. Go check in on her later, would you? What about you? You okay with me taking Mr. Delight's case? Y yeah I'm fine, Nick. I believe in you. I'm gonna cry. Um, I, uh... I know you have a lot of work to do. I... I really appreciate it. Okay, Nick, let's get this show on the road. I'll never forgive you, says the little girl that will 100% not remember this encounter happened if you gave her a bowl of ice cream. To be fair, Pearls is very mature for her, for her age because she's been through a lot. Her mom is one of the people that you convict in the last game. Because of some crazy succession bullshit. Uh, uh, Mr. Nick, welcome back. Oh, April's back too, I see. I, um, I went and bought a strawberry cake. I'll go make some tea to go with it. Hey, uh, Pearls? Mia's family is drama. Yeah, no kidding. It, it's like the, the, the family drama of the Faye family is like a very core story element for the original trilogy of Ace Attorney games. It looks like she feels really bad about what happened at the detention center. Why do we have to read this again? M Mr. Nick, I was wrong about you. I shouldn't have trusted you. I... I'll never forgive you. Ever. Mystic Maya, the tea's ready. This is the third game. This is the last game in the original trilogy of games. And then there's the sequel trilogy, which get which is getting a port to all consoles on the 24th of January. Which, how in the world they took so long to port it? It boggles my mind that they spent so long waiting to port the games. It literally took the eShop shutting down for them to port the games off of 3DS. I guess technically they were also on mobile, but the mobile versions of those games are mobile games, so... And then there's also the Great Ace Attorney duology, and the, uh... It sounds like some Star Wars nonsense with the original trilogy. Kind of? Except it's a lot more coherent, because... You've got the original trilogy that were all Game Boy games originally. And then... You have Apollo Justice, which was supposed to be... It's start to its own arc, and it kind of... Is? Which is the fourth game, which was a DS game. And then you've got Dual Destinies and Spirit of Justice, which are... 3DS games, which are 5 and 6. And then you've got the Great Ace Attorney duology, which happened, like, in... in... Victorian England, basically, and they're... Like, the first game is all I've played of that one, and I haven't even finished it. I'm very excited to stream those games. And it's, like, Phoenix's ancestor. 
And then you've got the Investigations duology that happened between this game and Apollo Justice. But it's a lot more coherent than the Star Wars trilogy is. Oh, thanks. Come on, Mr. Nick, please have some of this cake. Yeah, thanks. Um, pearls? Oh, I excuse me, I was in the middle of cleaning the toilet. Hey, it's okay, I just cleaned it this morning. I'm too late. This might be a good time for me to ask about her. Gosh, I love... I love the Turnabout Sisters theme. First met Pearls a year ago. It was when that murder happened in Kurine Village. It's kind of a running gag. I still remember what she said to me when we first met. You... You're Mr. Nick, right? You're... You're Mystic Maya's special someone. Hey, Maya, I've always thought it was because she was young, but... Hemorrhoids is only a running gag in that one trial, and boy am I glad that it is only a running gag in that one trial. But what? Pearls? I think she's got the wrong idea. About you and me. Huh? Uh, I... Um, there's something you need to understand. What is it? Um, it's kind of like a Kurain village custom, sort of. There are hardly any men in Kurain village. When you mention it, I never actually saw any men there when I visited. I'm pretty sure I told you about it a long time ago. About how spiritual powers run very strong in the Fey family? Yeah, you did. And that's why you're undergoing training to be a spirit medium, right? Yeah. The thing is, only women can actually inherit the spiritual power. And that's why the whole culture of Kurain Village kinda revolves around its women. Well, that's understandable. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, but because of that... There tends to be a lot of unsuccessful marriages. Oh? Well, men start to feel left out after a while, and they just start leaving. Especially if the man has a daughter. You're saying that Pearl's father? He's gone. He left the village when she was very young. Boy, that's tough. Yeah. I don't actually know if Grossberg shows up later. I don't think that he shows up in any later games, but I don't know if he shows up later in this game. Yeah, and she grew up seeing nothing but unhappy marriages all around her. That's why she's so sensitive to things like that. Girl seems to love you a lot. Well, it's because I'm her only cousin, and, well... Because of the murder case last year, Pearlie's mother is... Oh, yeah. I remember now. Pearls' mother, Morgan Fay. She really loved drinking that candle for some reason. I wonder what kind of scent it was. She's serving a prison term in isolation right now. So you see, I'm the only family Pearly has right now. But it's the same for me, too. Maya. And my mother's gone, too. This is just a plot recap, basically, of the last of the events surrounding the Faye family in the last couple games. So your mother's still missing? Yeah. And no one has any idea where she is. His mother, Misty Fay.
Morgan Fay a spirit maiden? Yeah. It's 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 what makes the it's what makes this game so great is that it's not afraid to be very like on the nose with stuff. But it also is really good at knowing when to balance it out. Aya's mother, Misty Fay, the current master of the Kurain channeling technique. She disappeared 17 years ago after getting involved in a certain police case. But you're sure she's still alive, right? Yeah, I know she is. It's sort of a spirit medium thing. If your mother doesn't come back, then what? And then according to the laws of the village, I'll become the next master. Stick Maya, master of the Kurain technique. Sounds like a heavy responsibility. Yeah, but there's no one else with the blood of the Fey main family who's a spirit medium. Well, Nick, why don't we go out and start investigating? We're not gonna learn anything just sitting around the office. Yeah, I know. But first, I want to talk to Pearls. Um, Mr. Nick? Yeah? I... I acted like a baby. Pearls? I doubted you, even though Mystic Maya trusted you completely. I guess I still have a lot of training to do. Mr. Nick. Yes? I, from the bottom of my heart, apologize for what I said. Oh, that's okay. I'm the one that should be apologizing. Well, I'm going out now for a little bit. Huh? Where are you going? I may be small, but I still have a lot of spirit channeling power. And so I'm going to show you I can be useful too, by gathering some evidence. Hey, wait a... Ugh, she sure runs fast. Nick, let's back off and give her some room, okay? Yeah. Um... M Maya! Oh, Miss Andrews. I'm so sorry, it's all my fault. Your precious urn. Your precious urn. Please, calm down. What's wrong? It never ends. Everything I touch ends in failure. Maya, I'm sorry. I'll do anything to make it up to you. N no, it's okay to... I know I don't look it, but I'm good with my hands. I could make you another urn. Hold on, just wait, okay? Breathe, calm down, and talk to us. Forgive me, forgive me. Um, so when did you get the calling card from Mask to Mask? Let's see. Exactly ten days ago? I was going to show it to the police, but that detective stopped me. Um, so you asked Detective at me to help with security? Yes. In fact, it was about 20 days ago that I hired him. He seemed to know much more about Mask to Mask than the police. So you hired him for security even before the calling card arrived? Definitely not suspicious. Well, yes. I had a premonition of something... that something bad might happen. I've learned to trust my hunches. So that's why there were security cameras, even in the basement warehouse? Yes. Lordly Taylor is very serious about their security measures. It was their way of saying, bring it on, to any potential thieves. Well, he sure brought it last night. Left with a nice souvenir. Um, can you tell us a bit about the security for the treasure exhibit? It was all my fault. I never should have called this paltry little collection a treasure exhibit anyway. 
Why do you say that? Hearing that was stolen is a pretty important object. Maybe, but its actual value after appraisal was... Well, practically zero. Zero? I polished it until it was just about glowing. I thought maybe I could make it look more valuable. But, but that urn contains the soul of Mystic Ami. Anyway, I left out all the security arrangement or I left all the security arrangements to Detective Atme. But and five days ago, I began receiving all sorts of other exhibit items from Kurain. Lots of people started going in and out of the warehouse down there. And so maybe one of them was actually masked a mask in disguise. <clears throat> no, I personally checked everyone that came through here. So that's not possible. Knowing Adrian, she probably even checked out what they ate for breakfast this that morning. Miss Andrews? I know, I know. It's all my fault. But what's done is done. I'll make it up by making a new urn for you. I'm just wasting my time. She's too far gone. Just double checking. I'm a lawyer. What do you have to say about Luke at me? Oh, I think we're supposed to be leaving. Pathetic looking wooden box. Oh, wait. Don't touch it. There may be clues to the, to the thief's identity on it. <sighs> I worked so hard to make that box. Oh, wait. Yeah, this is the same. Um... I present mask to mask. Nope. Okay, let's leave. Um, at me, are you back at your place? Hello. Oh well, how lovely it is to see you again, my dear. I forgot what I did for Atme's voice. Welcome to my abode. Relax and soak up the atmosphere. But, um, we're actually kind of... Shh, silence. <laughs> Precisely as I expected. W what is? Zavari! The truth has once again been elegantly revealed to me. A lawyer and a spirit medium. Am I correct? Um, I think we've already been through this. Ha! Huh. So my estimation was correct! Zavari! How truly elegant! Now then, what can I do for you? You mentioned before that you were on guard duty all alone last night. Precisely! This is my fifth encounter with my arch enemy. I refuse to allow anyone to interfere with m the rightful pursuit of my prey. I heard you've been after Mask to Mask since his very first theft. Yes, my dear. I see you've done your homework. In his very first heist, that vile thief pilted a famous jewel, the Tear of Eminon. I first encountered him in the museum's sacred hall, the crime scene itself. And so, that's why you were hired as security for the treasure exhibit? Pretty sure he said that Adrian Andrews hired him. Yes, 
I borrowed some equipment from Lordly Taylor and set the perfect trap. You must mean the security camera. But I thought you were watching the area yourself, too. It's not quite your voice. So how did Mask to Mask manage to steal the urn? That's the million dollar question. What is Mask to- or what is Damask's modus operandi? Um, Mr. Ratney, do you know about the sacred urn? I'm interested in only one thing, my dear, and that is Mask Damask. Sacred urn? Pfft, it has nothing to do with this case. But isn't that what Mask Damask stole this time? I'm a hunter, sir. The urn was nothing more than a lure to catch my prey. Do you remember? Er, do you? Er, do you yourselves remember the shape of the individual peanuts you throw to pigeons? I don't think I like this guy's attitude, Nick. Well, anyway, it looks like he doesn't know about the urn. Um, there's something that's kind of been bothering me. Please, my dear, ask me anything you like. After all, we are all but seekers, wandering alone in the dark. Well, I was wondering how Mask to Mask managed to steal the urn. I mean, isn't it strange that you don't seem to know? Yeah, now that you mention it, it is strange. After all, you were on guard that night at the scene of the crime. Unless you were sound asleep, you should have at least seen Mask to Mask. Cool, first psych lock of- or psyche lock, however the fuck I've decided to pronounce it. What the? It's a psych lock, or psyche lock, however the fuck. N psyche lock? Hey, Nick, what is this psyche lock thing? Well, your Magatama lets me see when people are keeping secrets. By breaking their mental locks, I can find out what those secrets are. What? This Magatama has that kind of power? I, uh, you're the one who gave me this Magatama last year. Well, it's true that this Magatama is a prized Fey family heirloom, but... Pearly was the one who actually imbued it with spiritual powers, right? That's why I don't really know much about what it can do. This is the woman that's going to take over the Kurine Channeling School someday. And so how do you do it? How do you break the psych psyche lock thing? Well, you present the Magatama to the person with the secret. Cool, can't wait to see it in action. Come on, try it out. Oh boy, I think the future master still needs to learn how to be patient. Detective Atme, you were standing guard at the scene of the crime. There's no way you didn't see Mask to Mask commit the crime. Well, now, I can hardly see why you're so positive about that. Yes, indeed, I was guarding the warehouse, that much is true. But I can tell you for certain that not a single person passed through that door. I'm not sure why, but this Atme guy is lying through his teeth. I know. I'll show him some proof. Detective Atme, I have here proof that someone went through that door last night. There was a security camera set up at the scene of the crime. It should have automatically taken a photo of anyone that went through that door. Precisely. Hope you don't mind, but we've already gotten our hands on the camera data. As you can see, the camera went off exactly once last night. What? But my monocle didn't catch anyone in its flash. It must be some kind of computer malfunction. It, it must be. Maybe if maybe it was your monocle that malfunctioned. What? Are you saying I didn't do my duty properly? Detective Atme, you must have seen the thief last night. The question is, why are you trying to hide it? If he's hiding it, there must be some reason. Some reason that he desperately wants to keep hidden. 
and I've got just the piece of evidence, so that should prove it. Okay, let's suppose you didn't manage to see Mask to Mask. In that case, the reason you didn't at the time was because you were... Unconscious. I'm afraid that making a guess is not enough. Time to put your money where your mouth is. Show me your evidence. Detective at me. You were knocked unconscious by the thief, weren't you? <laughs> Surely you must be joking. You think that I, Luke at me, could be knocked unconscious so easily? The sword proves it. Th that's... For the theft, this sword was in the hand of the statue of Ami Fei. Furthermore, at that time, it was not bent. Uh, uh. There's only one explanation. You were struck on the head and knocked unconscious by the sword. Well, detective, how about it? I'm impressed. You truly are an ace attorney. I can't deny that there may be a small hint of truth in what you say. So, you were knocked out when the thief first clobbered you? Clobber? What an ugly way of saying it. But I suppose you could put it that way. The coward stru struck at the precise moment that I turned to look at the computer. And so you never noticed that the thief had entered the warehouse? No. The coward must have wormed his way in through somewhere besides the door. Perhaps the air ducts or the sewer pipes. Then my arch-nemesis struck me on the head from behind with this gruesome item here. Ouch. Mr. Ratme should have his poor head examined. Say that again. How could he have underestimated the thief that badly? Well, looks like we got one thing cleared up anyway. Huh? What? That Ratme is the greatest ace detective in the world? Why is an attorney doing their own investigation? Because at least in this universe, uh, at least in this universe, the prosecutors lead the investigation team. And so, uh, the defense, like, the defense attorneys tend to investigate on their own to make sure that they get pieces that the prosecutors would either miss or, uh, commit perjury over. No, that he never actually saw the thief. Oh, that's right. So the thief may not even be mask to mask. Just one moment, sir lawyer. The thief was unquestionably mask to mask. But you never actually saw him. Perhaps so, but I installed a security camera for just such a contingency. Oh. Last night, the camera went off exactly once. Behold, this is a photo of the dastardly thief taken by the security camera. That's him. N mask to mask. Also, give me a sec. The thief can be none other than the arch-rival, er, than the arch-criminal, Mask to Mask. After all, he has a very good reason for committing such brazen crimes. Why did it only catch Mask leaving but not entering? That's a good question, actually. What are you talking about? So, what did you mean by he had a very good reason? Exactly that. Mr. Delight had a very good reason to dress up and commit those crimes. There should be a green envelope somewhere in his room. I've been stalking him for three weeks now. 
You'll need to go and investigate. But how would you know about that? Huh. Have you forgotten? You're speaking to the finest ace detective to ever walk on the face of the earth. The most brilliant mind since, well, ever. Look at me. Well, I guess we'd better go take a look, just in case. Desiree, we're opening your husband's mail. Hey, Nick, remember what Detective Atme said? Exactly that. Mr. Delight had a very good reason to dress up and commit those crimes. There should be a green envelope somewhere in his room. You'll need to go and investigate. That's a felony. It is a felony. Green envelope, huh? Looks like this is it. Okay, let's have a look. If you don't want your true identity revealed to the world, come to KB Security at 1 a.m. on October 12th and bring $50,000. 50000 This is a blackmail letter. Sure looks like a major clue, all right. And then Phoenix proceeds to pocket it. Oh, someone's at the door. I'll be right back. Won't take but a second, I promise. Oh, thank you for coming. That's so nice of you. When I see a damsel in distress, I just can't help myself. I know who this is, so I can voice him kind of how he's supposed to be voiced. Please come on in. I'll make some coffee. Really? Okay. I guess I'll make myself at home, pretty lady. Wait a minute. I know that voice. Oh, Nicky boy, I'm so sorry, but I've got another guest. Ah! You! You're... Nick, it's you! Amaya too, what a fluke! Ah, Larry. A long time no see. What, you know each other? N Nicky boy? Nick, do you and this girl have, you know, something going on? Uh, oh, whoops. I underestimated you, Nick. A gorgeous lady like this? And married, too! Way to go, dude! I knew it. Just when things can't get any worse, it's time to cue in the butts. Harry Butts. Ever since grade school, he's been... Not exactly a close friend, but yeah, we know each other. Hey, man, that wasn't nice. I was your very first client! Got quite the... storied history, he and I. And what we used to say still rings true. When something smells, it's usually the butts. Hey, come on now! You're embarrassing me! And in front of this pretty little thing here. And see you two are old childhood friends, I see. It's so sweet. You two go ahead and catch up on old times. I'm gonna go check on my bike. Nice girl, that does he. So have you been, Nick? Too busy if you really or too busy if you really wanna know. So what have you been up to this whole time? It's been two years since I heard from you. And what's with those clothes? Look well. Weird. Hey man, that's uncalled for! This is my uniform for my part-time job! But I can't believe it's been two years! They say time flies when you're having fun! <laughs> huh? What's wrong? Nick, I gotta tell you. Women. I don't trust him anymore, Larry Butts, incel. Got dumped again? Well, you know, Benefer. 
I followed her all the way to Japan two years ago. That's where I met the famous Caddy Tom, and my whole life changed. Benifer? Caddy Tom? I never heard of either of them. Anyway, dude, Caddy Tom chose Hollywood over me. Can you believe it? Well, actually... Anyway, it sounds like you had quite the adventure. Women. They're so... so... ugh. Oh, but, but you're different, Maya. You're not like the rest. Looks like he's still the same old Larry. Uncertain about his character, but his expressions are gas. He's much better as a character in the first game, honestly. Like, from what I remember of him in this game, he's much better out as a character in the first Ace Attorney game. So, what are you doing here, anyway? Huh? What do you mean by that? Just a natural-born nice guy, that's all. Larry, 100%. <laughs> Women are awful, try dating men. <laughs> yeah, I could- I could see Larry- I could see Larry- Yeah, that- that did come out wrong, but, like... Larry- I understand what you meant. <laughs> what? And I feel the need to say that is that was not meant to be taken seriously. That was a joke. The opinions of Larry Butts are not the opinions of Maddie the Magical Girl. <laughs> what do you mean by that? I'm just a natural born nice guy. That's all. See, he even thinks he's a nice guy. Well, actually, I picked up this last- or picked this up last night while I was working. A wallet? You say this- you found this last night? Yeah, it had a driver's license in it, so I figured I'd just return it myself. He said the thing! Hang on, let me see that for a minute. I knew it. Desi's picture's in here. Yeah, I guess he really digs his wife, huh? Hey, Nick! It's not what you're thinking at all! No, I'm pretty sure it is. You haven't changed a bit. Uh, no way, man! I mean, she's a married woman! That's just bad news! He really is here just to check out Miss Delight. And so, you said you found it at your job, right? Yeah, I'm working for a private security company as a guard. Chicks just love a guy in uniform, you know? Security guard, huh? So that's what that uniform is all about. So what time was it when you found this last night? Huh? Why are you asking that? Trying to see if I, I've got an alibi? Um, you're not the one on the hook for a crime this time, buddy. I guess it was around 1 in the morning, on the first floor of our company building. What was Mr. Delight's wallet doing there? Where is he guarding? He's guarding the security company. Like, he's the security man at a contracted security company. That might not, that might not have been shown yet, but he's he works at a place called KB Security. And what was Mr. Delight's wallet doing there? Anyway, there's nothing weird about that. After all, he works there. He works there? You mean Mr. Delight? Sure. Here, take a look at this. It's right here in his wallet. What's this card? It's a key card for the security company. See? It's got a serial number on it right there. There's no mistake about it. You said you're working part-time at a security company, right? That's right. Why are you making that scary face? Security company, huh? Something's not quite secure about Larry working there. True. Need to find out as much as I can about this keycard. So you're sure about this keycard? Yep, that's the keycard we use at the building I work in. According to, the, uh, according to the serial number, this one's for the CEO's office. You need it to get into that room, and every time you use that card, it leaves a record. 
It leaves a record. Yeah, it tells you exactly who entered the room and when. Larry, I need that data. Whoa, slow down, man. Sorry, but that data is off limits to outsiders. If I lost this job, I'd never have a chance with Desi. It's times like these when I wish lawyers weren't so powerless. issuing a subpoena, Phoenix. Go talk to the DA. You didn't touch anything in the wallet, did you? Hey, man, be serious! You know what I was interested in. Mask to mask doesn't look out. He's gonna be the victim of a robbery himself. Larry, what about this? What? If you got something to say, then say it already. Huh? A, a blackmail letter? Do you know anything about this? W what? I don't know anything about Alexis, and that's the truth. Huh? What? I, I can't believe you'd do it this to me. I thought you were my friend. Fifty thousand dollars? I don't have that kind of money. No, no, you don't understand. This blackmail letter was sent to Ron Delight. You! Man, you scared me. I almost had a heart attack, you idiot. Wait, I'm the idiot? Man, I was totally confused because it says KB Security wrote on the envelope. Um, yeah. And so what? That's where I've got a part-time job. At KB Security. W what? Sounds like you should really find out some more info about this KB security company. KB security, the company in the blackmail letter. Know about it? That's where I work, yeah. In fact, I'm on the job right now. Huh? So, what are you doing here then? Well, the boss is away right now. And you know what mice do when the cat's away? Yes, yes. Anyway, how far away is this company? Hmm. Let me see. About 30 minutes by car, I guess? Well, if you fly down the road, anyway. Oh, well, this apartment building is pretty close to Lordly Taylor, right? And it would take roughly an hour to go from here to KB Security and back. Rondelite was at KB Security when the robbery occurred, then. Whoa. Then he couldn't have stolen the Sacred Urn. Hey, Nick, your phone. H hello Is this the right residence? Wow, that's not quite your voice, that's way too high-pitched. Ah, uh, Pearls, where are you? I... I thought I'd go to Lordly Taylor to find out s or to try to find more clues, but... I'm afraid I've gotten lost. What? Give me that phone, Nick. Pearly, where are you right now? Um, I was walking along and found myself in front of that person's office. That person? Who? Um, that person who doesn't act his age, and always says Zavari when he's excited? Look at me. Ace defective. Okay, stay right there. We're coming to get you. Uh, alright. I'm a little scared. Alright, let's go, Maya. Wait a second, Nick. What? That phone call just now. Sounded like a real cutie. She's nine, Larry. Another one of your, uh, special friends? Say goodbye to Miss Delight w for me, would you, Larry? Banish to the Shadow Realm. This version of Larry. Larry 2.0, off to the Shadow Realm. 
Larry 1.0 is actually a bro, but... Hey, look, there's a bag on the table. Uh, Mr. Nick. Mystic Maya. Pearly. I never thought I'd see the two of you again. Oh gosh, I just realized something really weird about Pearls' eyes. The, uh, the ring on the inside of her eyes that's not the pupil is at different heights in her two eyes. Why? So is Mr. Ace Detective out of the office? Yes, when I arrived here, there wasn't a single soul in sight. And say, Nick, doesn't it look like something's changed since we were here last? Hey, Sachi, what were you saying what the fuck to? I think you mention it. And this bag. I'm sure it wasn't here before. It looks quite full. I wonder what could be in here. Hey, Nick, come on, open it up. Hey, wait a minute. You can't just open his private property. Nick, you literally opened a man's mail without his consent earlier. Like, not even ten minutes ago. You really think this is the place to draw the line? Don't be such a fuddy-duddy. This is an important investigation. It's true. Truth be told, I have to admit, I am kind of curious. Well, what's in there? Hang on a sec. Taking it out now. Whatever it is, it feels kind of hard. Smooth. Well, hello there. You're gonna see that pearl sprite in your nightmares. Uh, he's here! What are you doing, sir lawyer? I'm shocked to see a servant of the court ignoring the law so flagrantly. I I'm really sorry. Maya made me do it. Nick, I can't believe you! A gentleman never uses a lady as an excuse for his own poor behavior. The real question is, can you afford to waste time lollygagging about here? What do you mean by that? Perhaps I should make myself more clear. Tomorrow's trial. Zavari! Shall we say the figurative? Sir William will be dropping his panties before lunchtime. Wow, Nick. It sounds like it's gonna be really exciting. <laughs> um, what's gonna happen at the trial tomorrow that's so dramatic? Do you know what your biggest mistake so far has been, Sir Lawyer? It was becoming a lawyer in the first place. And that certainly does sound like a big mistake, Mr. Nick. Tomorrow will be the day to, will de Tomorrow will be a day to remember. I, Luke Atme, will take the stand. And then, Zavari! My testimony will prove to be the undoing of, of the lot of you. Yes, all of you. I will unmask you as the thief's co-conspirators. Conspirators? <laughs> You're quick on the defensive, I see. However, it's not I that is your greatest enemy. There is a far more dangerous threat that you will face during the trial. Wh what are you talking about? Sir Lawyer, if you are truly who you say, I'm sure you've heard of him. His name is Godot. Godot? Um, who's this Godot person? It's not surprising that a spirit medium has not heard the name. Godot, the prosecutor's her e whose equal cannot be found in this country, but in heaven. Godot, a legend or myth. Men pin a lifetime of hopes on the chance to simply meet him. And Prosecutor Godot. But the best prosecutor in the country isn't Godot. It's Mr. Edgeworth. Isn't that right, Nick? 
It's no surprise that a spirit medium such as yourself would know nothing of this. But Ace Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth is currently traveling abroad. Huh? In fact, it was Mr. Edgeworth who acknowledged Godot as the best in this country. And you agree with that? Most certainly. In fact, you could call him the Luke Atme of the Prosecutor's Office. Well, that's good to hear. The prosecution has a fighting chance tomorrow. <laughs> Mr. Nick, is this Godot really that strong? Hmm. I seem to remember hearing about someone like that. Not surprising. Some people spend their entire lives idly waiting for his appearance. Is that a reference? Is that a reference to waiting for Godot? That's, that's like the plot of that whole show. That's genuinely the entire plot of Waiting for Godot. You've taken a step down the path of foolishness. To try and defend a career criminal who deserves nothing less than the death penalty. Hey, last time I checked, no one knows for sure that Mr. Delight really is Damask. <laughs> My dear lady, times may change, but people sadly do not. Well, you'll understand this when you're more mature. It's like we're done investigating for the day. <laughs> Sir Lawyer, the stage has been set and all the pieces are finally in place. All that remains now is for the dance to begin. I'm having a lot of fun voicing at me, if you can't tell. New prosecutor, an ace detective, and a thief. This will be one tough trial. Hey, Nick. What is it? Something wrong? Nah, but did you see all the people here? It's crazy. Oh, so check out the Mask to Mask Glossy I bought. Bought this... where? In from the little tents in front of the courthouse. They have all sorts of things for sale. You know I'm a sucker for this kind of stuff. Come on, I'm guilty. Throw the book at me! Who's screaming like that? Oh, Mr. Wright. Also, I don't know if it's just my imagination, but I feel like the shading on Ron is done completely differently than it is on Maya and Pearls. Oh, Mr. Wright, you made it. Yeah, I did. But it doesn't look like things are gonna get any less ugly for you. Because I did it! I'm the criminal me! Me! <sighs> He's at it again. I sent the calling card to Lord Lee Taylor. I admit it. But you don't have the sacred urn, right? Well, that's true, but... That doesn't mean that I didn't commit the crime. Only when I say, of course you didn't, I'm being sarcastic. But you? Yikes. Anyway, I admit that I'm guilty. So make sure they give me a guilty verdict, please. Oh, there you are, Ronnie. Bonjour, sweetie. Oh, D Desi, honey. B bonjour. Well, actually... I don't really know why I should be speaking French to you at a time like this. <clears throat> Leave it all to me, Ronnie. I swear I'll protect you. Um, uh, uh, well, uh, you see... Actually, the thief is, a uh, me. Can I tell you something, Nicky boy? I can't- I can guarantee that my Ronnie is innocent. If he's declared gu guilty, I'll be ever so cross with you. So why are you smiling when you say it? 
Well, if you'll excuse me. I've got some errands I need to take care of. I'm counting on you, Nikki boy. Good luck. To be honest, I really don't know whether Ron is Mask to Mask or not. But I'm sure- er, but there's only one thing I am sure of. It doesn't have the sacred urn right now. Mr. Delight, it's time for you to enter the courtroom. For the time being, I guess I'll have to trust Desiree. Look at that man! is now in session for the trial of Mr. Ron Delight. The defense is ready, Your Honor. <laughs> Here he is! What about the prosecution? Are you prepared to... What a stupid question. You say? Fine. Let me ask you then, Your Honor. Are you ready? Are you ready to pass judgment? No, I, I'm not. I will pass judgment after I hear arguments from both sides. Well, if you're not ready yourself, you shouldn't expect others to be. That's a rule to live by. Um, who are you? I'm Godot, legendary prosecutor, but never lost a case. Uh, he's the one that Detective Atme was talking about. It's only been five years. Yes, your reputation precedes you. What kind of cases have you dealt with so far? <laughs> None. Did you say? I've never prosecuted a case before. Never. You said you've never lost before. Exactly. I've never lost. I've never won before, either. Quite arrogant for a beginner, aren't you? Even the mightiest of Redwoods begin their lives as mere saplings. Yes, but... Mask in a court of law? Huh. Don't you know anything? No matter the man, we all wear masks. Either on our faces or over our hearts. This guy is the real deal, all, all right, Nick. He's a rookie. Also, this Maya sprite is such a good Maya sprite. Why does it seem like all prosecutors are the real deal? So, we finally meet Mr. Phoenix Trite. N Nick, is he a friend of yours? No. I don't have any friends that call me trite. Just who is this masked man? I've returned from the depths of hell to do battle with you. Well then, uh, Prosecutor Gobo. 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 <laughs> Prosecutor Gobo. That's actually- Gobo is spelled with two Bs, though. It's not Gobo, it's Godot, Your Honor. In any case, please give your opening statement. Opening statement? Those things are not fit for even dogs to consume. I have only one thing to say before we start. To you, Mr. Trite. What is it? You familiar with the saying, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link? I wonder, how much can you withstand before you and your case break in two? Well then, let's hear from the first witness. Uh, my name is. Er, my name is. No one's asked for your name, witness. Ugh. The important thing is what you know, that's all. Start talking, we're listening. Yes, sir. Alright, witness. Let's let's first hear about 
What do you know about the thief that stole the urn? Yes, sir. Gosh, I just realized how similar I've accidentally set Gumshoes and Godot's voices. Master Mask is a master thief. First started his crime spree six months ago. So confident that he sends his calling card before he even commits the crime. This is his fifth heist, and has usually sent a card to Lordly Taylor. His pattern is to always go after the most precious art pieces. That's why we're sure it was Mask to Mask, sir. It's his M.O. to a T. Hmm. So then the actual identity of this Mask to Mask is... Mr. Godot, what are you? of a trial here, Mr. Godot. Blacker than a moonless night. Hotter and more bitter than hell itself. That is coffee. I'm sure you can grant me at least this much, Your Honor. Oh, please, proceed. Very well. It's only coffee, after all. Godot is great. What? You can't be letting him slide this or er, yeah, you can't be letting him slide this early in the trial. Proceed with your cross examination, Mr. Wright. Well, Nick, what are you gonna do? As long as they haven't brought up Mr. Delight's identity. All we can do is show that it wasn't Mask to Mask who stole the urn. Gumshoe's design is is extremely generic. Yeah, but he's 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 a bro. As such, he's hot. Gumshoe, Gumshoe has, like, very good scruffy aesthetic to him. Master, er, master Mask is a master, master thief that started his crime spree six months ago. Wow. I need to try that more often. That actually came out really well. Have you been involved in the investigation from the beginning? Yep. Nobody knows more about the thief than me, pal. It's true. I'm a Zavari, author on thieves. An author? He's written books about thieves? Um, I think he probably meant to say authority. The fact that this guy can slip through even my fingers shows how good he is, pal. It's easy when those happen when those fingers happen to be butterfingers. So nobody knows more about the thief than you, huh? You got it, pal. Except maybe for the thief's mom, that is. But isn't there someone who knows even more about him than the police? You don't mean Detective Zavari, do you? Who's this person? Zavari? Sounds German. His name's Luke Abney, sir. Guess I shouldn't have made up such a silly name for him. What the heck? Guess he's not all that famous after all. Anyway, it's true that he did manage to retrieve the last item the thief stole. Oh, I see. It seems you're not the expert you claim to be. Ugh. Looks like the thief is toying with me even now. He's so confident that he sends his calling cards before he even commits the crime. You seen all of these so-called calling cards? Of course I have. Except... The person in charge of the, uh, the treasure exhibit never brought their card to the police. So I didn't see this one until after the crime occurred. That's because Detective Atme stopped Miss Andrews from taking it to the police. Is the calling card Lordly Taylor received authentic? Well, all the cards have one common identifying feature. We're not releasing that information to the general public. You're absolutely certain this card is real. I'm sure you can't say it out loud, but I bet he's talking about Master Mask's emblem. This was his fifth heist. As usual, he sent a card to Lordly Taylor. Hold it. 
It's fifth heist. Your fifth screw up, huh? Objection, pal. That ain't fair. If you could say I screwed up four times. This last time wasn't my fault. I didn't know about the calling card this time. You, of all people, shouldn't be chuckling about this, Detective Gumshoe. I just want everyone here in the courtroom to know something. If you ever get a calling card from this guy, don't call some stupid private eye. Call your local police right away, got me? Wow. Looks like he's really got it in for Detective Atme. This pattern's always to go after the most precious art pieces. Art pieces? Like what, for example? Well, his first target was the famous Tear of Eminon. What's that? Some sort of especially salty teardrop? N no, sir. It's a blue diamond. A single rare diamond. This was the crown of Bongora? You know the thing you put on your head? After that was the left hand of Hades? And then the portrait of Magina, sir. Detective Abney retrieved the portrait of Magina and returned it to the museum. Target of his fifth and sec er wow. The target of his fifth and last robbery was the sacred urn, right? But isn't it difficult for him to dispose of such famous art pieces? Well, we assume he must have some sort of underworld connections. And somehow, Mr. Delight doesn't look the type. Yeah, he's a little too sunny to be hanging out in the underworld. I think I know what this is. Is this... Has no monetary value. Only goes after the most precious art pieces. Objection! Can I ask you a little something, Detective Gumshoe? I swear, Gumshoe must have, like, a miniature panic attack every time Phoenix says something along these lines. Just hearing the little in that question is making me nervous. You said that he always goes after the most precious art pieces, right? That's right, pal. There's one problem. That's not what he did in this case. A supposedly priceless urn it doesn't exactly rise to the level of precious art. What do you mean? Nick, how can you say such a terrible thing? No, I meant from a financial point of view. I mean, it would... it wouldn't fetch a good price. Well, Prosecutor Godot, what is the value of that urn? The appraisers I spoke to said they couldn't attach a price to it. I mean that in the worst sense. So in other words, it was not the kind of item that Mask to Mask would normally go after. Ugh. Hmm. If I understand you correctly, Mr. Wright... You're saying that the theft of the sacred urn was not the work of Mask to Mask. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Actually, all I did was point out the contradiction. The argument made itself, but... Well, first of all, we need to get this issue cleared up. Was the last robbery the work of Mask to Mask or not? What do you have to say about this, Mr. Kato? Gosh, he's so cool! This coffee here. It's my own special blend. I call it Godot 107. I try to decide whether to cut down on the acidity or the bitterness. It's the only thing I've got on my mind right now, Mr. Trite. What? Fun fact, uh, in the original draft, like, in the concept work for this game, Godot was originally supposed to be drinking a glass of brandy. Or whiskey, or one of the... He was supposed to be, like, toting around a glass of alcohol, basically. And, uh... They were like, nah, you know, kids might play this game. And then, uh... <laughs> That went completely right out the window the instant the Great Ace Attorney 2, or not Great Ace Attorney 2, Great Ace Attorney came out, because uh, 
Van Zeeks literally has a wine bottle and decanter that he whips out in the middle of court, and it's great. <laughs> yeah, and then the goat Van Zeeks came around. <laughs> I still need to play the Great Ace Attorney. That's probably what I'm going to be playing next Ace Attorney-wise, is going through the Great Ace Attorney duology. What? If you're really a man, you should clean up your own mess. I'm sorry, but I don't get what you mean. You're saying it wasn't Master Mask that stole the urn. Then it must be someone imitating Master Mask's methods. A fake. Fake mask damask. Or fake damask. And fake damask. That sounds so ridiculous, but I like it. Now, before I decide on my coffee, I believe some proof is in order, Mr. Trite. Proof that the person who appeared at Lordly Taylor that night was actually a fake. Hmm. I don't approve of Mr. Godot's behavior. His point is valid. Mr. Wright, we're waiting. Looks like I'm gonna have to prove it. I need proof that the person at Lordly Taylor that night was, in fact, fake Damask. <laughs> I like Maya's smug ass face in the bottom corner of this. <laughs> Security camera picture. Oh, he's missing his brooch in the, uh... In the security camera photo. He's missing the brooch around his neck. Proof is right here. A photo taken by a security camera. But if you look closely, you'll notice something peculiar about it. <laughs> well then, why don't you go ahead and show us what it is? Go on, use this pointer and show us what about this picture is so peculiar. Take that! It's right here, of course. You mean... Mask to mask. I have here a piece of reference I would like the court to take a look at. Isn't that the publicity photo I bought this morning? The problem I have with the security camera photo is the brooch. Bro brooch, brooch, brooch on mask to, or on Damask's chest. A breach? Here, Bailiff, get my steed. We need to retreat at once. A Roach, Your Honor. Sort of clasp for holding one's cape on. A clasp, eh? Ah, I see now. The mas but mask to mask in the security camera photo. Ah! He has no brooch. That brooch is the same th as the emblem on Damask's calling card and serves as his symbol. Mask to Mask's symbol very heavily resembles Fanto from the Mario series. Coincidence? <laughs> but the thief that broke into Lordly Taylor wasn't wearing a brooch. In other words, this Mask to Mask is a fake. I've been fooled again! That's not quite your voice, but okay. Order! It's true. Undeniably true. Detective Gumshoe, how, how could you have overlooked this? Uh, I'm sorry, sir. I don't know how I... Hey, now. You're gonna have a pity party. Invite me, too. Mr. Godot, 
You deserve some blame in this, too. How could you have overlooked such a large brooch? Huh. Brooch you're talking about? You mean this? Ugh. That's master master brooch. Where did you find it? Well, I've always had a good nose for evidence. I got it at the crime scene. It was hidden in the shadow of a big female Buddha statue. Buddha statue? You must mean the Ami Face statue. Why didn't why didn't you tell me about that, sir? I always put evidence away in my pocket. After all, it's the safest place for crucial evidence. <sighs> this guy is one cool customer. It's a little early to be shaken up, isn't it, little lady? That friend of yours left a pretty er left pretty little hickeys on there too. Hickeys. Figuratively speaking, of course. I'm referring to Ron Delight's fingerprints. Whoa. What? The defendant's fingerprints are on the brooch. Order. Order in the court. Mr. Godot, let us see that brooch. I've grown attached to my metallic girlfriend here. Take good care of her. Hmm. She? I mean, it appears to have been torn off of some clothing. There's a little bit of cloth left on the back. Obviously, there must have been a big struggle that night in the crime scene. Uh oh. Phoenix, we have a problem. Huh. Mess with Godot. You get burned. Ugh. It's been playing me like a violin. Well, Judge, I'm about ready to call my next witness. Huh? You're done with me? I haven't proved anything yet. You've proven your own incompetence. That's good enough. That doesn't sound good at all. Bailiff, bring the next witness into the courtroom. <clears throat> Finally, time for the ace detective to make his appearance. Huh? There we go. Now we have now we have multiple distinct voices. One second is one drip of the coffee pot. Let's hurry it up. Shh! Silence! <laughs> now I see. It's all becoming clear. What's clear? Zavari! The truth has once again been elegantly revealed to me. What we have here is a judge and a prosecutor. A coffee maniac at that. Am I correct? Well, yes, that's right. Huh. Not bad. Not bad at all. You're the first person that's ever been able to penetrate my secret veil. Well, Sir Prosecutor, let me introduce myself. My name is Luke Atme, ace detective and rising star illuminating the heavens. Boy, these two make a perfect pair. Better be best friends, or they tear each other's heads off. I've heard that on the night of the crime, you were all alone on security detail. You've heard correctly. My specially made monocle is worth more than a hundred Detective Gumshoes. If Detective Gumshoe is worth anything, that is. Hmm. Why was this guy all by himself, anyway? Also, I just had a really interesting thought. I wonder if, uh, the Apollo Justice Trilogy is going to be rated M. Come shoes poor salary. But yeah, I wonder if the Apollo Trilogy is gonna be rated M, because Dual Destinies is rated M. Why was this guy all by himself, anyway? There must be some reason. I'm sure of it. Well, 
Evelyn. Tell us what the special monocles of yours of yours witnessed. It was approximately one o'clock in the morning, just after the date changed. That's when my nemesis, the infamous Mask Damask, dancingly descended upon me. Just as I began to turn, the coward struck in a fierce blow upon my noble head. Darkness swallowed me before I could land a single strike. When I awoke, he was gone. Thirty minutes later, I used an emergency phone to notify the police. Didn't get a clear look at the criminal. My specially made monocle never misses a thing. However, that is limited to things that fall within my own visual range. But of course, that's only natural. I fail to see why the witness seems so proud of his performance that evening. Well, sir old-timer, let me explain. We are not speaking of any ordinary thief. But of the King of Thieves, the Great Mask de Mask, my arch-enemy. That is what my instincts and my years of experience tell me. Hmm. Very well. Proceed with the cross-examination, Mr. Wright. It was approximately one o'clock in the morning, just after the date changed. So that would be one o'clock in the morning of the 12th, correct? That's an impressive deduction, sir lawyer. You were on security duty that night. Where exactly were you at the time? A penetrating question. I was in the basement warehouse and near the computer. Near the computer, huh? Then you weren't trying to remain hidden, I take it. Up to this point, I have... Up to this point, I have tried to remain concealed while waiting for the thief. Yeah, he said the same thing yesterday, too. Gumshoe also said that that they've never spotted the thief at the crime scenes before. Precisely. That is precisely why I chose not to hide last night. I knew that by not concealing myself, I would be putting the pressure on the thief. Looks like the thief was the one applying pressure. On your pigeony head, that is. In any case... Give me a sec. Sorry about that. That is when my nemesis, the infamous Mask de Mask, d dancingly descended upon me. Dancingly descended? From where exactly? Well, from the entrance, I suppose. Where else? So in actuality, he neither danced nor descended. Someone please save me. Um... So how is it that you didn't notice the thief? My eyes were looking for the thief's shadows, er, shadow, while my ears listened for his footfalls. But even so, the dastardly criminal managed to sneak up on me. I can only- it can only be due to his subtly camouflaged cape and soft-soled shoes. Hereby W. Ace Dunce. Just as I begun to turn, the coward struck a fierce blow upon my noble head.
You didn't see the criminal's face when that happened. Well, that's the difficult part. How should I put it? I saw his mask. That's all I can recall. Hmm. That's not very solid as far as testimony goes. However... Fortunately, I had my third monocle, the security camera at the ready. It captured this image perfectly. This should be sufficient, I believe. Hmm. Well, as long as this photo is authentic, I don't see a problem here. Well, Mr. Godot, do you have a problem with the photo? Good. Let's continue with the testimony. Darkness swallowed me before I could land a single strike. When I awoke, he was gone. Attacked and knocked unconscious. Weren't able to do a thing? Certainly some very impressive detective work. Huh. Well, Sir Lawyer, have you ever been so suddenly attacked on the head? Um... I mean, Maya smacked us in the head yesterday. Huh? Well, actually, yes. By a fire extinguisher. And what happened? Oh, this is in reference to the first case for Mesa Attorney 2, actually. I, I was knocked out. And you lost your memory, too. You see, you have no right to look down on me then, do you? There's also the time that Maya smacks Phoenix over the head with a lead pipe in a the Phoenix Wright Professor Layton crossover. In the middle of a trial, no less. The only reason I didn't lose my memory was because I have more brains to begin with. I have brains, but the wiring to the self-reflection part seems to be severed. In any case, that was how I knocked... S I was knocked senseless. And then... 30 minutes later, I used an emergency phone to notify the police. And there's something suspicious about Detective Atme. How could he not have noticed when the thief came in? Also, he says he was knocked unconscious before he could fight back. That can't be right. It contradicts the evidence. Huh? Which piece? The real question is, why would he tell such an obvious lie? Blow to the back of the head. Is it the Shiji Shinto? Nope. I see the evidence in the statement. They aren't, aren't they? Not at all. Mr. Wright, please think the facts over before making accusations. Of this 30 minutes, my silver cord was loosened, and my soul fled to the golden halls of Elysium. As usual, I have no idea what this guy is saying. I think he's saying that he was out cold. So, what happened during those 30 minutes? No one can say, Your Honor. That span of tr time has truly vanished into the ether. Just what is he going on about? Yep, something suspicious. It says he was knocked unconscious before he could fight back. That contradicts the evidence. Oh! Uh... The brooch was torn off in, like, a struggle or something. I think. Yeah! Mr. Atme. Could you take a look at this with that special monocle of yours? Ha! <laughs> this belongs to the criminal mastermind, my arch-nemesis, Mask Damask. It is, 
In point of fact, Mask Damask's brooch. It was found on the floor of the basement warehouse. Wonder how that happened. Huh. Elementary, my dear lawyer. Obviously, it wasn't glued on well enough. Not quite. Clearly shows signs of having been ripped off a piece of clothing. Ripped off? Aha! We can only deduce that the thief struggled with someone that night. That's the only thing I can think of. And there's only one person that was in a position to have to have a struggle with the thief. The only person that was on security duty that night. You, Detective Atme. <sighs> Detective Atme, you must have fought with the thief that night. So, why did you lie in your testimony to the court? Witness, giving false testimony is a serious crime, except when it's not, because this is Ace Attorney, and perjury is only a crime when we want it to be plot relevant. It's only a, it's only ever a crime in uh. What is it? Um. I think it's only a crime in like the great Ace Attorney. Now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think anyone ever gets convicted of perjury, other than someone in the first four cases of the great Ace Attorney. I don't remember who. Rise from the Ashes in the Great Ace Attorney? Yeah. Where's my, uh... Where's my Ace Attorney-like game where you can just, uh... Commit perjury consistently? I... No. Wait just a moment, sir, old-timer. Talk to me like I'm living in a nursing home. <laughs> oh, yeah, DR3 does have the lying mechanic, doesn't it? I just remembered, Your Honor. I was just confused because I've been dealing with so many cases lately. The true measure of a man is the amount of work he does. That's what I always say. Nick, you can only handle one case at a time, isn't that right? You talk too much. Yes. You now say that you and the, and the thief fought. Hold on. That's quite enough, Your Honor. Excuse me. Save the big questions for the testimony. That's one of my rules. Indeed, I understand. I, Luke Atme, agree completely. Indeed, it's true that I looked away from the door for a brief moment. However, Luke Atme cannot be so easily discombobulated. <laughs> Every time I see discombobulate, I think of that stupid video that's like the scene from the Sherlock Holmes movie that's just him going through the whole boxing sequence, but they replaced every step of his strategy with discombobulate. He's like, first, discombobulate, and he like smacks his ears over, or he smacks his hands over his ears. And it's just that consistently. <laughs> it's just that for the entire fight as the clip. It's great. I'll see if I can find it and send it in the Discord. Unfortunately, the thief grabbed a weapon from the side and rendered me senseless. A true gentleman fights only with his own fists. But they were not enough. His first blow struck true. Bam. And that's all she wrote. Also, completely random thing that uh, that just reminded me of. There's actually a really weird thing in the... scrub quote and a skill issue um there's this really weird thing because in the great ace attorney they had to rename sherlock holmes because uh the people that own the copyright on him are very stingy 
with how he's portrayed, with how Sherlock Holmes is portrayed. But, um, fun fact, Sherlock Holmes is dropped, is like, is name dropped in the first Ace Attorney game as Sherlock Holmes, not Herlock Sholmes. So in the end, did you, er, you did capture, er, so in the end, you did capture, catch a glimpse of Mask to Mask. Why did that line? Correct. It was during his third crime that he struck me from behind. Probably because he didn't appear as a character. It's not even that. It's just because he's, he's name-dropped in Ace Attorney 1. Because uh, Phoenix is like, Oh yeah, Sherlock Holmes 2, baby. It's And because uh, the great Ace Attorney kind of portrays... Uh, Sherlock Holmes as kind of a bumbling idiot. That's the main reason why they had issue with him being used there. It seems that my memory has become a tad jumbled, so to speak. Hmm. Well, that's certainly understandable. I myself always get confused about which testimony goes in with which case. That can't be good. Indeed, it is true that I looked away from the door for a brief moment. So why did you look away from the door anyway? In addition to the camera, I had prepared a variety of other sensors as well. The alarm on one of those had gone off, so I had to check the data. That's why I went to the computer, elegantly of course. You were momentarily vulnerable when you were working on the computer. What should I do? Should I ask him more questions? Not the sensor. What kind of sensors are you talking about? There are other places in the basement that someone could enter and exit from. There are air conditioner ducts, sewer pipes, and a cat door as well. I hooked up heat detecting, infrared, and ultraviolet sensors to each of them. It's a lot of hardware. Is it all yours? Lordly Taylor Department Store was kind enough to provide me with the monitoring hot software. Hardware. Naturally, the security camera that took the photo belongs to them as well. In other words, he couldn't have rigged the equipment, huh? <laughs> Has that cleared up any doubts you have about me, sir lawyer? However, Luke Atomy cannot be so diesel easily discombobulated. Um, what does that mean? Discombobulated? Hmm. Some people these days, they truly irritate me. They look perfectly good old words to die until everyone forgets what they mean. Sorry, but what exactly does it mean anyway? Now I've forgotten. What, would I, what was I saying? Jeez, it's better that old, than old people who forget what they were saying five seconds ago. Well, looks like we've cleared that up. Go on with your testimony. Unfortunately, the thief grabbed the weapon from the side and rendered me senseless. Ha <laughs> What do you mean by weapon from the side? Naturally, that thief had no idea that I, Luke Atme, was hiding in the area. He grabbed the sword from the statue that was standing by the door to this warehouse. Jeez, that is a run-on sentence. He grabbed the sword from the statue that was standing by the door to the warehouse. <sighs> there needs to be a comma somewhere in there. Just don't know where the comma would go there. Sword. You mean the sword that was all twisted like a tree branch? Correct. Fortunately for me, the blade was not sharp. Okay, so he is talking about the Shiji Shito. So, 
thief armed himself with a sword. But what about yourself, witness? A true gentleman fights only with his own fists, but they were not enough. You had that much faith in your own fighting abilities? But of course. In college, I was the second in charge of the boxing club. Sorry if I failed to find that appropriately impressive. However, my opponent in the ring, this time, was my arch nemesis, Mask to Mask. This guy is a real piece of work. His first blow struck true. Bam! And that's all she wrote. Well, what do you think, Nick? Well, there's one thing that I'm absolutely sure of now. Yeah? What is it? This Luke at me guy. He's definitely hiding something. But why? I think I'm starting to figure out what really happened that night. About the true nature of this detective. Can you tell us a little more about what happened? My opponent was both powerful and vicious. You might say he was powericious. Powericious? I assumed the Atomy fighting stance, but a sudden flash of light blinded me. That, of course, was checkmate. My opponent had bested me. What do I do now? Should I ask more about this? Atomy fighting style? What is this at me fighting style? I'm sorry, but that's a trade secret. I really can't say any more. But I suppose I can I can tell you if I absolutely must. The main thing is to put your back to the wall. That way no one can get behind you. That's it? That's the at me fighting style? Hmm. Oh, uh, Mr. Wright, what about the testimony? Very important. Of course it's important. We've learned a detective's secret technique, after all. Yes, indeed. I'll remember to use it if I ever take a walk alone late at night. Why the heck is he eyeballing me like that? It's creeping me out. Now that I this, go ahead and add that secret information to your official testimony. I put my back to the wall to fight, but the thief's blow landed upon my third eye. Except you were hit from behind. Objection! Detective at me. Your testimony is crumbling like a house of cards. What fun this is, Sir Lawyer. It's truly a pleasure to cross swords with you. And now, once again, you've thrown down the gauntlet at my armored feet. I believe this is what you said yesterday. No. The coward must have wormed his way in through somewhere besides the door. Then, my arch-nemesis struck me on the head from behind with this gruesome item here. From behind, huh? That's not quite your voice. But just now, you testified that he struck you on the forehead. I hardly think you could forget where you were hit on the head. <clears throat> it seems I've made another mistake. Detective Ami, that's not the only strange part of your testimony. What do you mean by that? For example, the very fact that you hid the calling card from the police itself, er, yeah, from the police itself is strange. It's almost as if you were afraid they were going to help with security. <sighs> Geniuses such as myself has al have always been misunderstood. How sad. That's wrong. To err is human. To forgive is divine. Humans are machines. They have souls, feelings. They live, they die, they love, they hate. And yes, they even make mistakes. Hey, hold on! It's not as pretty as that. Really? What's it like, then? Always chase a riddle down to the end. That's one of my rules. 
This is it. This might be my chance to turn things around. Mr. Wright, what exactly is it that you're asserting? Very well, Your Honor. The defense asserts that... Mr. Atme is masked to mask. The answer is simple. It's all clear to me now. Detective Luke Atme's true identity is actually Mask to Mask. <laughs> Order! Order in the court! Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? There are too many unnatural parts to Mr. Atme's story. He says he was hiding at the crime scene, which is why no one ever saw him there. And then, in his last case, he managed to out he manages to outperform Detective Gumshoe and the entire police force to miraculously retrieve the stolen treasure. That's because I analyzed the crime scene data and made an exquisitely elegant deduction. I picked up clues that the police overlooked in order to arrive at a Oh, please. The explanation is far simpler than that, Detective Atme. The truth is that you are, in fact, Mask to Mask. <clears throat> Mr. Wright, this photo, it clearly shows Mask to Mask. The security camera belongs to Lordly Taylor Department Store. How would he wear the... <laughs> Mr. Wright, how would his nose fit behind the mask? It sticks a full, like, four inches off of his face. He shouldn't have been able to manipulate it. Or, this camera, the security camera belongs to Lordly Taylor Department Store, is what the judge said before. He shouldn't have been able to manipulate it. He didn't need to manipulate it. He gained access to the warehouse under the pretense of, of providing security. The nose is also fake. And he simply dressed up as the thief and stole the urn. So, the ace detective is actually an ace thief. Is this true, witness? <laughs> Damask's MO is pure genius, and so am I, Luke Atme, ace detective. You're very clever to have come to such a conclusion. I'm impressed, sir lawyer. What? Witness, you... You're admitting it? N Nick, now's your chance. Yes, time to put the last nail in this guy's coffin. Detective at me. When you assumed the. The Dope Blend 102. My personal favorite. Mr. Godot! The ace detective is actually an ace thief. I smell a best-selling novel. Or better yet, a best-selling video game. I think I'll call it Persona 5. There's only one problem. It simply isn't true. But Mr. Godot, Mr. Wright has made some very strong points, and I... I will admit my opponent has woven a compelling narrative out of, a whole, cl out of whole cloth. It is, in fact, nothing more than a patchwork quilt, Mr. Trite. If this detective really is the thief, then show us the proof of your claim. But it had better be as hot and as perfect as the coffee dripping down your face. Well, Mr. Wright, don't just stand there. This court would like to see the decisive proof you have, quickly. Huh? Oh, y yes, of course. It's the big rush. Are you alright, Nick? Hemi looks pretty rattled right now. I'd like to finish this right now if I can. But can I really do it? The decisive evidence that proves Mr. Luke at me is in fact mask to mask. I'm making a confidence save. 
right here. As usual, the defense comes prepared, Your Honor. Very well then. Let's see what you've got. Please present proof that Mask Damascus actually Luke at me. Here's your proof. What do you think, Mr. Cadeau? Looks to me like Mr. Trite's still a mite sleepy. Perhaps you'd like a big mug of my special Godot blend. Well... N no thanks, I'm fine, really. What do I do now? Another mistake like that and I'm through. Nah, you got like, six more of those. Don't have a thing. Proof? Of course I... I've got nothing. <laughs> Just what I thought. Man has to hold his head up high, no matter how bad things get, after all. Ugh. I see. Thought perhaps you had some evidence to back up your assertion. It's no good. I've gotta stay on the attack. <clears throat> Never get another chance to prove that this guy is the thief. Don't give up, Nick. Think harder and try again. It's no good. I'm just not ready yet. But, but are you going to just give up and let us lose this? So, you've come to your senses, have you, Sir Lawyer? I, uh, uh can't think of a counterattack at all. Seems the cloud of suspicion surrounding this witness has lifted. Mr. Cato, do you have anything further to add, then? Ooh. Who are you? That doesn't really matter right now, does it? Mr. Light, what are you doing here? Nikki boy. The thing you've been looking for. I think you found it. I mean, that bag? No, not the bag. What's in the bag? Well? That's... The sacred urn! Nick, it's the urn! Order! 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 You! Madame, that urn, where did you find it? You'll never believe it. It was in the office of Mr. Fancy Pants Ace Detective, Luke at me. Oh, Desi, you're the best. Look, it actually says Ami now instead of I am. Well, how do you explain that one, Mr. Atme? Even you are going to have a hard time weaseling out of this one. Objection! Huh. Pathetic. Mr. Cadeau, you have something you wish to say? Yes, Your Honor. It simply amazes me how quickly times change. In the old days, a man was to be taken at his word. It's truly sad. I'm still denying that Mr. Atme was involved. Forecasting aspersions of the detective at me. Consider the young lady here. Your name is Desiree. Desiree Delight, is that correct? Y yes what about it? Huh. How charming. The lengths that a woman is willing to go to save her husband is truly inspiring. What are you insinuating? As the wife of a criminal discovered that stolen urn anyway, or anywhere, including the office of the good detective here. So you found the urn, what does that prove? It certainly doesn't prove where the urn was before you found it. What? I just brought it here from the detective office. Please, madame. This town is already filled to the brim with lies. Any more could only compound what tragedy we've been witness to. You're wrong. I would never... I would never do such a thing. Miss... er... well... Miss Delight. Please, Nicky boy. You've gotta help me talk some sense into these people. Must be some way. I've gotta prove that Urn was actually in the Atme Detective Agency. Fingerprints. I can prove where the urn was. 
by the fingerprints on it. Fingerprints, eh? Oh, come now. Now you're really making me laugh, Sir Lawyer. Fingerprints indeed. May I go on? Good. Now, it would be perfectly understandable if my fingerprints were on the urn. After all, it was I who was guarding the urn in the first place. In any case, I'm always in the habit of wearing gloves, as you can see. So unfortunately, my fingerprints wouldn't be evidence of anything. About it, Mr. Wright. This witness's fingerprints would be nothing anyway. Nick, what are you going to do now? I've come too far to turn back now. Atme must have brought the urn back to his office yesterday. And there, I'm sure someone must have left their fingerprints on it. The defense proposes that the fingerprints of this person should be on the urn. Take that! So what is all this fuss about fingerprints anyway? Mr. Ratme, do you recall the events of yesterday? Hey, Nick, come on, open it up! Hey, wait a minute. We can't just open this- open his private property. Don't be such a fuddy-duddy. This is an important investigation. Well, what's in here? Hang on a sec. I'm taking it out now. Whatever it is, it feels kind of hard. It's smooth. Well, hello there. It's true that I didn't get a chance to look in the bag at that time. But... I did touch what was inside. W what? You touched it. And I remember it very well. It was smooth and hard. W well, th that was just... Your Honor, I'd like the court to examine the fingerprints on that urn. If my fingerprints are on there, then it proves that the urn was in Detective Atme's office. Objection! Well, even if your fingerprints are on the urn, it still doesn't prove when they were put there, does it? Of course it does. What did you say? It's not what I say, but what Adrian Andrews, the person in charge of the exhibition, said. Scientific investigation. Emma would be so proud of us right now. I polished it until it was just about glowing. I thought maybe I could make it look more valuable. If she polished it that much, she must have removed any and all fingerprints on it. And the only chance I had to get my fingerprints on it after that was yesterday at the Atme Detective Agency. <laughs> this blend. The Dough Blend 107. I've decided. It's a little too bitter, after all. Order, order, order. Accept the defense's request. Hey, lift, whack his peepee. -pee. Take this urn and... Wait. Wait a moment, Your Honor. There's no need for that. No need, you say? Precisely. Godot is a fucking Giga Chad. Hey, Saint Dreamer, how are you doing? Welcome in. Precisely. I already know Mr. Wright's fingerprints are on the urn. Are you saying? Yes. I've finally broken him down. <laughs> Take a good look, everyone. Unable to find a rival worthy of my genius, I was forced to create one myself. Here I am, the tragic clown. This guy is nuttier than a fruitcake. You see, it was me all along. I am the one and the only Mask de Mask. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed my little performance. <laughs> well, Mr. Godot, what is Mr. Atomy's condition? He's still in the lobby, 
laughing insanely, Your Honor. I wish I could enjoy the joke as much as he seems to be. Well, it looks like the matter has been settled. I came perilously close to besmirching the record of an innocent young man. Besmirching him with the title of thief. Nick, you were right after all. Yeah, I guess Mr. Delight really wasn't the thief. The court finds the defendant, Mr. Ron Delight. You're wrong! Wrong, I tell you! Uh, um, I mean... Not exactly wrong so much, but... Actually, not right is what I was really trying to say. Oh no. He's not. This can't be happening. The thief. The sneaky... Odi odious? That's not a word I've seen in a... At all, I think. I played through this game before, but like... I don't remember this word at all. I don't know the definition of this word. Odious thief who's been stealing all the treasures. It's me! I'm him! I'm the one you want! I'm the thief, I tell you! So do it! Pronounce me guilty, please! I don't know what kind of kangaroo court you all think this is, but... Objection! True identity of the thief has already been proven. Please hurry and pass judge... What are you talking about? I already confessed! I'm the thief, I tell you! It means unpleasant. Mr. Coteau, don't just stand there drinking coffee. <laughs> Quote that applies to the entire game. Huh. Hey there, Mr. Thief. Y yes yes sir? If you're really a man, then clean up your own mess. I I'm sorry. I'm afraid I just don't have any idea what you mean. You are a mess to mask, then prove it. That's what it means. Y yes sir! I'll be happy to! He says he'll be happy to, Nick. It's kinda cute. He's 100% committed to his fantasy. Good boy. Just remember one thing. The boy only gets one chance in his life to become a man. I, I know that! I won't fail, I swear! Okay then, talk. We're all listening. Oh well. Let's all have- or let's all listen to this convers- or confession. Wow. The truth is, I've been masked to mask all along. I mean, you can't prove that I'm not actually masked to mask, can you? I don't have an alibi for the night the urn was stolen, after all. I donned my costume that night and dancingly descended upon the scene of the crime. Look, you can see right there in the photo. That's me. As for my brooch, I snagged it on the door handle and it got torn off. That's all. Hmm. I don't like the direction this trial has taken. But this is how every trial goes. At least with me, anyway. Judge, don't... Judge, you don't understand. This is going to get... So much worse when there are three of me walking around. You'll have to deal with me and my two apprentices in about seven years. It's going to get so much worse for you, Judge. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> Stop it, Mr. Godot. You're embarrassing me. Like I said... You're only going to get one chance to testify, all right? But if you make it through with the, this with flying colors, I'll keep my promise, too. I'll make sure you stay locked up in prison as the one and only true mask to mask. Thanks so much, Mr. Gato. I-I'll do my best. All right, Mr. Wright. I'm afraid it's time for the cross-examination. The truth is, I've been masked to mask all along. You may think you're the real masked to mask, but your wife thinks you're delusional. I haven't told Dessie yet. 
About my true identity, I mean. Believe me, I've got my reasons. The way your room is decked out, how could she not know about it? Hmm. Even thieves have complicated family situations, I suppose. What should I do? Sounds like we're about to get sidetracked again. Leave it. No point in digging through any more of their dirty laundry. Well, why don't you continue with your testimony for now? This is incorrect. Uh, we have the wallet found at the same time. Objection! Mr. Delight, this wallet belongs to you, correct? Uh, yes, it does. I I'd lost it somewhere. Mr. Wright, to find a wallet, you should report it to the police right away. Uh, no, you don't understand. This is an important piece of evidence. Evidence? Mr. Delight. When did you first notice that you'd lost your wallet? Uh, let's see. I think it was on the night of the crime? But I know I still had it when Desi and I went out for dinner. This wallet was found at approximately 1 a.m. at KB Security Headquarters. What? Surely you're not serious. Yes, I am serious. This proves that Mr. Delight was, in fact, at KB Security that night. No! So if the defendant was at KB Security at 1 o'clock in the morning, then that proves that he has a watertight alibi. No! Furthermore, considering the distance between Lordly Taylor and KB Security, it would have taken 30 minutes to get there by car, according to Larry, anyway. Mr. Godot, do you have anything to say? And stop drinking that coffee! Come on, Mr. Thief. Don't let this guy beat you. Tell him why he's wrong. You're the only one who calls me Thief, Mr. Godot. Alright, I'll try. I I'll do it, I will. He's really got Mr. Delight all worked up. Yeah, he's like a kid at his first day of school. Look, it's just ridiculous. Why would I have dropped my wallet at KB Security? Someone must have planted it there to make it look like I was there and not at the heist. Planted it there? He's really reaching now. Mr. Delight, you probably dropped your wallet when you took it out to use this, didn't you? Keycard to KB Security's CEO's office. No! Uh, that was a pretty good try, Mr. Trite. Unfortunately, you've overlooked one small thing. What? Motive, of course. Why would this thief go to KB Security in the middle of the night, anyway? Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, looks like you need some more evidence, after all. Ugh. Stupid kid. Now then, let's see your evidence. The evidence that shows why Mr. Delight went to the KB Security at 1 a.m. that night, it's the blackmail letter. Take that! Mr. Delight, I believe you've seen this before, correct? Uh, th that's... What is it? A blackmail letter. It's what it looks like from the contents. Blackmail? Yes. It basically says, bring $50,000. Hmm, that certainly sounds like blackmail, all right. At the time of the theft, Mr. Delight was dealing with the blackmailer himself. In KB Security's CEO office, a full half an hour away from the scene of the crime. Ugh. Ugh. No, 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 no! Order, order, order! So, when the theft of the urn occurred, the defendant was at KB Security. It looks like a perfect case for the defense. Objection! You may see it as a perfect case, Judge. But to me... Well, let's just say that my Godot, that my Godot Blend 107 impresses me a lot more. What are you trying to say? 
say the thief was being blackmailed by the CEO of a security company. But, did you actually investigate the CEO at all? Huh? Well, um, no, I guess not. Accusing a man of blackmail, blackmail with no proof? I'm not sure what I think of that. I'm not sure what I think of that. At least I know what to think of you. Hmm. Good point. I'm not sure what to think of it myself. You claim that the defendant entered the CEO's office. And you'll need at least one witness to corroborate your claim, Mr. Wright. Nick, I think we're going to have to track down the CEO guy. No, we don't have to track down the CEO at all. What do you mean by that, Mr. Trite? There's someone else who can testify. This is the person who can testify that the keycard was used at 1 a.m. that night. It's Larry, isn't it? Here he is. What is this useless-looking young man? Don't remember him, Your Honor? Hmm. Not exactly. But just looking at this picture makes my makes the bile start to rise in my throat. It looks like he doesn't remember the case from two years ago. Probably blocked out that memory on purpose. Anyway, this man was working as a guard at KB Security that night. Oh. The question at hand is this keycard. Yup, that's the keycard they use in the building I, I work. According to the serial number, this one's for the CEO's office. You need, to, you need it to get inside the room, and every time you use that card, it leaves a record. Yeah, it tells you exactly who entered the room and when. Hmm. As you can see, there's no need to investigate the CEO of KB Security. We should be able to, dis to discover the truth simply by analyzing this keycard's data. Mr. Godot? The name of the CEO of KB Security is Kane Bullard. I was unable to contact him directly, but... Got the keycard data. Here. What does it show? Each card key has its own serial number, and they leave detailed records of their use. According to this data, this card was used at 1 a.m. on the morning of the crime. That means... It can't be Mr. Delight dressed as Mask Damask in this photo. <laughs> Looks like you're right. Two minutes isn't even... <clears throat> Two minutes isn't even... Eh, wow. I've lost all the gravel in my voice. <clears throat> Two minutes isn't even, even enough to brew a good cup of joe. So... so then... Ron Delight was clearly in the office of KB Security's CEO at the time of the crime. The prosecutor's office is ready to admit that fact. Therefore, it's impossible for the defendant to be mask to mask. Good job! You did it, Nick! Give me a sec. Also, I don't know if I'm the only one, but this song very heavily reminds me of Professor Layton. That's enough. I came, perilous, I came perilously close to besmirching the record of an innocent young man. Besmirching him with the title of thief. What's wrong, Your Honor? You need to pass judgment. If 
before I do that. Do you have any further objections? No, Your Honor. Huh. <sighs> Very well. Court finds the defendant, Mr. Ron Delight. Not guilty. Thank you for the confetti, Gumshoe. Court is now adjourned. Nick, you did it! You were right after all. Actually, I'm a little bit ashamed of myself. Nicky boy. Oh, Miss Delight. I knew you could do it. I believed in you all along, Nicky boy. I don't know how I can ever repay you. Ah, oh, shucks. Thanks, Miss Delight. Just know I'm blushing. Congratulations, Mr. Nick. Oh, Pearls. I've got a bad feeling about this. <gasps> Who is this woman? Oh, she she's nobody. She's just a... Witch Sprite. You're blushing. How dare you do this in front of Mystic Maya? You should be ashamed of yourself. Ouch. She slapped me. Um, Pearly. This woman is Miss Desiree Delight, and she's our client's wife. <sighs> Mr. Nick! Y yes? You're even worse than I thought! Going behind the back of your own client! N no! You got it all wrong! I'll never forgive you! Way she looked with her eyes open and head tilted to the side. I didn't catch it. Ow, a double slap. Well, anyway, all's well that ends well, right? We got the sacred urn back and the thief has been caught. Oh, this one? That one? You're so right. And it's all thanks to Nikki Boy here. But actually, it was you, Miss Delight, that brought us our urn back. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. She's got a very, like... <laughs> you want to know what that face is, Sachi? That face is the, uh... It's got the same vibe as the, like, it was like she was looking at a piece of human garbage... meme. Oh, please, you're embarrassing me. On the case. Why does this guy still look so glum? Ugh. But I am a thief. Actually, what's the point now? What is it, honey? I did my best for you, Ronnie. Desiree is hot. She gives off very big butch lesbian vibes, and I'm... I'm there for it. I, I know that, and I appreciate it, Desi. But the thing is... Come on, give the kid some time. He's just got a little touch of the blues. You know about feeling blue, right, amigo? N Mr. Godot, what are you doing here? Oh, come on. I just came here to say thanks to my newest buddy. You, Mr. Trite. You should learn my name before you call me Buddy. Well, playtime is over. Huh? Early this morning, the body of Kane Bullard was discovered. Kane Bullard? Where have I heard that name before? Isn't that... the name of the CEO of KB Security? Wait, b body the estimated time of death was 1 a.m. on October 12th. 1 a.m. on October 12th? You don't mean... That's right, amigo. Same time that a cheap little urn was being stolen. The CEO of KB Security was being murdered. So then, 
What are you doing here? Oh, come on. You figured it out already, haven't you, amigo? Or... Have you already forgotten about that piece of info I helped you out with today? Help me out? What? On October 12th at 1 o'clock in the morning, Ron Delight was in the CEO's office. The scene of the murder. After getting that blackmail letter, he must have been imbued with utter rage. W what are you saying? Imbued with rage? I imbued with rage. He did say imbued in the red text. I just couldn't read it because my brain can't read the red text as well as I can the white text. Come on, don't tell me you didn't know. Light was once an employee of KB Security. He was a professional security guard. Employee of KB Security? Looks like the alibi that saved him from being convicted as a thief. It's gonna be the noose that gets him hanged. Kind of an anti-alibi. No way. He can't be the thief because he was at the murder scene when the murder occurred. N no That's a lie. It can't be true. Oh, oh, but I... I am a thief, I tell you. One delight. You're going back to prison again. This time the charge is much more serious. This time you'll be tried for murder. What? This can't... This is impossible. I'm looking forward to another exciting showdown, Mr. Trite. You and I aren't through with each other yet. Surely you won't back down from a challenge. You've never been a coward. Mr. Nick, is there something personal between you two? I return from the depths of hell to do battle with you. At least let me have some fun while I'm here. This guy. Who the heck is he? This grinning sprite is also used... Like, it's... There is a... There's another grin sprite later in the game that is very similar to Godot's Grinning Sprite, and it's great. He may be quiet. He's the most dangerous enemy I've ever faced. Yes, there is. Godot wants to kiss him on the lips. Well then, time to say goodbye to Mr. Delight. When you're talking hotness in a scale of 1 to 10, Godot is a 100, or is a 1,000. Godot, Godot is per- like, he's pretty hunky. N nick how could this be happening? Right in front of our very eyes, our client has been arrested for murder. And the one who established his presence at the scene... ...is me. Yeah, Ronnie! for murder on the very same day he's declared innocent of larceny. What the heck is going to happen next? Honestly, I don't hate the fact that this turns into a murder case, but I am kind of disappointed by the fact that this turns into a murder case. <laughs> You know, I'm glad we found the urn and all, but poor Mr. Delight got arrested again. Well, supposedly Mr. Delight was in the CEO's office when the murder occurred. No way, Jose. I don't buy it. But the one who proved that Mr. Delight was there... ...was Mr. Nick himself. At least from what I understand. And looks like you did too good a job this time, Nick. Um, uh, well, how about we get started looking into the KB security murder? I think I'm going to head back to Kurain Village for a while, if that's alright. Wow, I read that as Kurain. Sure, but why? I'm going to bring the sacred urn back and have some people take a look at it. Oh, that's a good idea. I think I'll go with... No, Mystic Maya, you should stay here. I want the two of you to spend some special quality time together, full of love and happiness. Well, 
is so caught up in, she, in her fantasy, she forgot there's a murder to solve. Now remember, no fighting, okay? And she's gone. Okay, Nick, time to get going on this murder investigation. Yeah, Pearls is cute. Charlie, a quite decorative plant. When she was alive, Mia really loved it. She even went so far as to make it our mascot. No matter how busy I get, I never forget to water this little fella. An old movie poster. Apparently this was the first movie that made Mia cry when she saw it a long time ago. Maya watched it recently and she said she cried all night too. Which, I guess, is why it's back up on the wall. I'll have to check it out one of these days. So, what do we do now? Isn't it obvious? We should get out of here and investigate the murder. Well, first we need to find out exactly where KB Security is located. Hey, why don't we ask Miss Delight? She should know. Besides, I want to ask her some stuff about motorcycles. Motorcycles? You're not thinking of getting one, are you? I'm not the same little Maya who used to be happy with her dinky little bike, Nikki boy. <sighs> Speaking of asking around, I've got a few questions of my own for Mr. Er, for Mr. Delight. Okay, well, let's make sure to go to the de to the detention center too. Must be relieved we got the sacred urn back, huh? You bet. But there's something a little different about it. Don't dot 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 question mark at me. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? I mean, take a look at this. It clearly says I am on the urn in the poster. But the urn we got back says Ami, like it always used to. Oh yeah, you're right. Plus, the vase has pink splotches on it now. I'm sure there weren't there before. I doesn't know, but one year ago, when the urn was broken, the repairer accidentally turned Mystic Ami's name into I Am. That repairer was one mechanically unskilled Little Pearls. But still, I don't remember ever seeing pink, pink splotches on it. Is it possible that urn, that urn is a fake? I'm sure Pearls will find out about that once she gets back to Kurain Village. Yeah, I suppose. Now that I think about it, Maya hasn't been back at to Kurain Village in a while, in a long time. So I guess people still go to Kurain Village to do their training, right? How many different ways can I pronounce Kurain Village? Yep, if you want to become a spirit medium, you need to undergo severe training. Yeah. So why haven't you been training lately, Maya? Well... Lately I've been thinking of heading to a channeling dojo to just to do just that. Channeling dojo? Huh? Sounds pretty serious, whatever that is. If you're going to train, you have to be serious. Otherwise, real tragedies can happen. Now what? Is what happened last year still bothering you? A murder in her village. It happened because the power of channeling was misused. When a medium uses the er, when a medium uses the Kurang technique, she tempor it temporarily loses her own will. So when an especially strong spirit is summoned, the spirit medium can get taken over and even forced to commit terrible crimes. What's worse, in those cases, the spirit medium has no memory of what happened. That murder. It wasn't your fault, Maya. You know that, don't you? I suppose not, but... I guess I'm still a bit shaken up, that's all. It sounds like being the master of Kurain is going to be a heavy responsibility. I already told you, it's not me! A sad, pitiful whine that tapers into silence. That's not quite your voice, Maya. It sounds like they're interrogating Mr. Delight right now. 
Man, and we don't have enough time as it is. Yeah, well, I guess the police are going crazy, just like we are. Yesterday they thought he was just a thief, but now they've got a murder case on their hands. <clears throat> I guess you're right. That guard over there looks a bit on edge, too. Come on, we'll just have to come back later. Okay, let's go check out some other place, Nick. Oh, Nicky boy. Maya. It's too late. All I wanted to do was help my dear Ronnie. Yeah. I guess it ended up hurting his case. Don't say that, Nick. She doesn't need your help beating herself up. Hey, Nicky boy. Please, please help Ronnie. He's not a killer, I swear. My Ronnie wouldn't hurt a fly. Alright, I'll poke around and see what I can find out. Really? Are you serious? Oh, I'm so happy. I knew asking for your help was the right thing to do. I... I don't know what I can do to help anymore. No idea Miss Delight had such a vulnerable side. Listen carefully, Nicky boy. My Ronnie would never, ever kill anyone. It's just not in him. I don't think he would either, Nick. Yeah, but you have to admit, he's got a bit of a temper to him. Not that hard to imagine him snapping and screaming, Please die! He would never say that. Anyway, Mr. White, he might not be a killer, but he's still going around saying that he's a thief. I already told you, that's just a fantasy for him. Mr. White, I hate to say it, but you're the one living in a fantasy world. W what How dare you say that to me, Nicky boy? I know everything about my Ronnie. We don't have any secrets between us. Ronnie isn't the thieving type. He's so honest he wouldn't even sneak a nap. He he's so honest that he wouldn't even steal a glance. The thief. <laughs> the very idea. So I just don't get it. Huh? Get what? I just can't understand how they can be so different and yet be such a happy couple. Yeah, they sure are different. Come on now, Nicky boy. It's not that mysterious, is it? He was love at first sight. For me, anyway. What? For you? I hate these kinds of people more than anything. Um, you mean ace detectives? No, I'm fine with ace detectives. Oh, and so then, you must mean thieves. No, they're alright, too. I just hate thieves that pretend to be ace detectives. There's nothing I hate more than cowardly men. And by the way, why did you go to Detective Atme's office anyway? Well, as the trial went on, I started to get more and more anxious. I went there to try to find out more about the real criminal. The real criminal? Yes, obviously, the real mask to mask is not my Ronnie, right? Yeah? And Detective Atme knew more about Mask to Mask than anyone else. They mentioned him on the Great People Around Town segment in TV. So then, you went there to ask him some questions? That's right. I'll do whatever it takes to save my man. His secretary said the Ace Detective isn't in right now. But I forced my way past her and into his hideout. Exact to call that office of his a hideout. That bag was sitting right there on top of the table. Oh, yeah. We saw that bag there yesterday, too. There's nothing lower than someone who would try to print... try to pin a crime on someone else. Miss Delight, do you know about KB Security? Don't be silly, of course I do. And that's where Ronnie works. She thinks he still works there, huh? And according to what we heard today... Come on. Don't tell me you didn't know. 
Quantalite was once an employee of KB Security. Here's a professional security guard. Ron quit. He doesn't work there anymore. It looks like Miss Delight doesn't know. Did Desiree kill him? God, could you imagine if the plot twist of this case was like, actually, Desiree is mask to mask, actually. KB security is only about 20 minutes away. By a motorcycle, that is. Harry told me it only takes it takes 30 minutes by car. Well, I have to admit, I tend to fly pretty fast on my bike. So it's KB security that fast. Are you sure you aren't literally flying? Why don't I give you a ride sometime? Or better yet, how about now? Um, uh, no. I'll pass. Thanks. Why don't you just tell us where it is and we'll go ourselves? <laughs> what a scaredy cat you are, Nick. Miss Delight told us the location of KB Security. Okay, let's head over there right away, Nick. Um, so was it really love at first sight when you met when you first met Mr. Delight? Well, maybe not at first sight, but Ronnie saved my life. And saved your life. I was at work one day when two robbers suddenly rushed in. Well, I'm not the kind to just curl into a ball in a corner, so I fought back. <clears throat> Robbers? Yes, and they took me hostage, and so I was frightened. They were both carrying these huge knives, and I... I broke down into tears. Yeah, I would too if I were in that situation. Except, uh, Phoenix, you are literally indestructible. Canonically, you are basically Superman with how difficult you are to inflict any kind of wound to. Granted, I guess the first instance of that doesn't come up until later in this game, but... Oh, I think I get it. Did Mr. Delight come running in to save you? Yes, exactly. I remember he looked so handsome in that guard uniform of his. What are these faces? He went right up to those two knife-wielding robbers and screamed in their faces. Also, why does the one on the right have, like, a plastic bag over his head? That's not a ski mask, that's literally just a plastic bag. Please stop it, he screamed. I could see the robber's face turn pale. A high-pitched shriek of his does have a surprisingly strong effect on people. Then, crying and swinging his arms like crazy, he attacked the two robbers. All by himself, he came to save me, a total stranger all by himself. He was so scared that he was crying and shaking, but he still risked his life for me. Wow! And that's a great story. Yes, he may not look it, but in a tough situation, there's no one better. And that's why I fell in love with him like I did. It's so romantic. I'd fall in love too, I guess. Nick, I hope you'll do the same for me if I ever get taken hostage. Maya, that possibility always seems to loom in the not-so-distant future. Maya, it's already happened once. Bad girl fell for the fail boy. <laughs> it's true. It's very true. So, guess this is where it went down, huh? The walls in here look thick, and just like you'd expect at a CEO's office. What has that got to do with anything? Hey, it's you guys. Oh, it's Detective Gumshoe. 
It was a real train wreck for you guys, huh? It sure was, pal. The prosecutor made real fools of us. Yeah. I feel for you. Wow, that's not like you at all. I thought you'd be more like... Oh, that was great. You guys got what you deserved, pal. <laughs> There's something to that effect. Do I really sound like that to you, pal? If the gumshoe fits. Um, well, anyway. When is I can tell when someone puts their heart in their jobs? I can sympathize when things don't go your way. Sometimes I feel like wrong is the only way things go for us, detectives. Wow. I had no idea Detective Gumshoe was c such a nice guy. Now if this little love fest is over, maybe we can start investigating. What happened? Detective Gumshoe, tell us what you know about the murder. Um, okay. Thing is, I'm really not supposed to. Hey, come on. What about the- we put our hearts into our work? And things are really working against us right now, and we need help. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. Just don't start crying on me, okay, pal? Okay, I won't cry on you, pal. Mickey Mouse voice, <laughs> what happened? The victim's name is Kane Bullard. He's the CEO of KB Security. Big fella in his own right. His corpse was discovered at 9 o'clock this morning. His estimated time of death was 1 in the morning on October 12th. Was the death was blunt force trauma to the head. Probably an object in this room. Happened at exactly the same time that Mask to Mask was stealing the urn, huh? So, why did it take almost an entire day to discover the body? Good explanation for that one. The boy's body was stashed away inside that safe. Safe? Well, it is pretty big. Nobody had heard from him. When they opened the safe this morning, out he came. Oh, so the body fell out. That white string must be the shape of when he fell out. I think we still need some more information about Mr. Bullard. Billard. Billiard. Maybe you could start by getting the man's name right. So, um, what happened to Mask to Mask? To the detention center, screaming like a madman. Investigate me again, he keeps yelling. Uh, no, no. I didn't mean him. He's not the real thief anyway, right? Oh, you mean the detective at me? <laughs> well, that was great. The guy got what he deserved. <laughs> Now that's the detective I know and love. Think about it. I mean, he was always around when a calling card showed up. But he always mysteriously disappeared when the heist took place. He was hiding at the crime scene? <laughs> yeah, right. That's the lamest thing I've ever heard. That's how you just knew he was the thief. I would explain how he was able to retrieve the stolen item he keeps bragging about. Yeah. He just did that to make himself look like a great detective, that's all. There's this one thing I can't figure out about his first heist. His first heist? Yeah, it's your Veminon. There's a witness on that one. A witness? Here, save the newspaper clipping. Since the thief is already under arrest, you guys can keep it. Hey, this guard here. Haven't I seen him somewhere before? It's pretty small, so it's kind of hard to see. Now that she mentions it. Oh, that prosecutor? I really don't like that guy. The way he used our own evidence to do that to Mr. Delight? Yeah. I think he did it that way just because he knew it hurt more. That's what my gut tells me, anyway. So who is the... who is that Java-addicted masked maniac, anyway? Prosecutor Godot? It's quite the enigma, huh? Thing is, pal, never even heard of the guy before. He just showed up one day in, at the prosecutor's office. Came out of nowhere. That's right. 
He said this was his first case as a prosecutor. And it's true. According to the records, anyway. But... No way he's an amateur. He's an Iceman in court. A maverick that gave me... that give me goosebumps. Goosebumps? You? Yeah. I knew something was off about him, so I asked around. Nobody would talk to me. They all just turned the other way. And poor Detective Gumshoe. I had no idea you were so unpopular. Uh, no, that's not what I meant. That Gado guy acts like he knows me and has a grudge against me. I get the feeling he's hiding some kind of dark secret. Detective Gumshoe, about this right here. Sorry, it's hard to believe. There's a limit to how much my brain can hold. Got two ears and two eyes, but I only got one brain. I can see your eyes and the ears. The jury's still out on the brain thing. Hey, Nick, if you have something to say, just come out and say it. be the CEO's desk. It's a lot simpler than I would have thought. Hey, that looks like a super soft chair. Let me try it out for just a sec. Oh, nice. I feel just like a CEO. Hey, you. Whip me up a cup of some really expensive import tea. And some scones. Move it. Ah, this is the life. Well, the victim sat in that chair just before he was brutally killed, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, there's a button here. Let's see. Hey, cut it out. Don't press that. <laughs> that was pretty funny. I never knew Detective Gumshoe could jump like that. It's a gamer chair. What is that button anyway? It's an emergency buzzer. This is right there on the panel. Oops, you're right. It's written right there. Nick, how many times have I told you to read the instructions first? This alarm's connected to the basement guard room. It's used to summon security up here. Really? It's possible on the night of a crime. Oh, and so when the CEO was attacked, do you think that maybe he pressed the buzzer? Yeah, I thought about that, so I asked around down there. But I said the buzzer never went off that night. Also, we couldn't find any fingerprints on the buzzer. Mr. Bullard, the victim, wasn't wearing any gloves, by the way, just so you know. I think we'd better go talk to that guard about this emergency buzzer. Wow, look at that huge framed photo. Tall mountains rising majestically against a dark and cloudy sky. That's not at all what that picture looks like to me. That picture looks like a forest to me. And there's a title written on the bottom of the photo. The greatest sunrise of my life. This is it? This was his best sunrise? If this guy didn't get out of get out enough. He had really rotten luck with the weather. Maybe if he had lived a little longer, he would have seen some better days. Ew. Think about it. A dead guy laying in here all night? Yeah. Oh, by the way, don't I, don't bother asking about fingerprints. There were none. Oh, somebody opened the safe on the night of the crime, right? Yeah, and so? Well, if Mr. Bullard's body was hidden in here, it must mean that it was opened by either the killer or the victim, right? Um, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Got some bad news for you, pal. Are you ready? Um, okay, shoot. Opening this baby is no piece of cake. There are only a few people who know how to open this safe, pal. Yeah, man. Everyone that knows how to open the safe had airtight alibis. I checked. Everyone except one, that is. I'm almost afraid to ask. Former security chief, Ron Delight. Also, I'm slipping more and more into Gato's voice for Gumshoe. What? Ron Delight? He was a security chief? So he knew how to open the safe, huh? 
Yeah. Sorry for raining on your parade there, pal. And this rope. You think it fell out of the safe when it was open? I don't think so. It's you mean. Yeah. And this string shows where and how the bo where and how the corpse was lying. Y you mean the victim he was killed by being crushed by the safe door? She can't be serious, can she? Check out this big thick binder here. Leave the heavy lifting to me, Nick. Being a file is an exact break or back-breaking work. It's a little hard on the eyes. Ah. W what did you find out, Nick? This file. It's not about any so sort of security operations or anything. This huge file is all about mask to mask. It's filled with info on him. What? What kind of info? It's filled with incredibly detailed information about his methods and the crime scenes. Hey, Nick, look at the last page. It's a list. Let's see. Tear of Eminon, 100,000. It's like a list of all the treasures that Mask to Mask stole. And so then, 100,000 is the value of the stolen item? I don't know. That number sounds kind of low to me. I think I'd better secretly make a copy of this list. I always find it really weird that you can get the cursor stuck on the edge of the bar here. These looks like they're wow. These look like some kind of bookshelf slash rolling cabinet hybrid. I can't get in between these two shelves. String yourself trying. Looks like the shelves are controlled by a special panel. And so I guess it's one shelf at a time, huh? Looks like they're filled with bunches of files. Yeah, files filled with data about the security jobs they were hired to handle. It'd be a good night's reading, if you've got insomnia. I was hoping for something a little more exciting, like UFOs or something. Um, so about this. Huh? What's that? Hey, wait a minute, Maya. What's wrong? He copied that data without permission. Don't show it to him. I get mad at us. Oh, what are you two whispering about? Uh, oh, it's nothing. It's just my blank, my billfold. That's pretty big. That's a pretty thick billfold you got there, pal. Oh, I really want you to show it to me. Detective Gun Detective Gumshoe, please tell us more about Mr. Shane Bluebard. It's Kane Bullard. Not uh, Shane Bluebard, pal. Oh, yeah. The victim in this case just doesn't make much of an impression on me. Uh huh. It's because he's. He has no personality. He's literally just here to get murdered. Well, you were the victim. Up until Mr. Bullard was found dead. Yeah. His body wasn't discovered until this morning. Anyway, we don't have enough information yet. Can you help us out? Sorry. I'm actually a little confused myself. For some reason, I'm just blabbing like an idiot right now. Okay, Nick. Now's our chance to get more info about the victim. So hurry up and ask. Can you tell us some more about Mr. Bullard? He was the CEO of KB Security, right? What kind of company was it, anyway? Well, the company basically sends security teams out to buildings to guard them. Mr. Bullard must have had the chance to learn a lot of secrets about doing this kind of work. Oh? And? And, I don't know how to put this, but the guy was kind of a money grower. Really? Me too. I just love money, I can't ever get enough. Please stop leaning in towards me like that. You aren't getting to my wallet. Anyway, looks like he did some pretty shifty stuff to earn his millions. Oh, so that's my problem. I need to be shiftier. You go already. 
Apparently, he was involved in selling trade secrets between rival companies. Oh, that's pretty dirty and underhanded. Yeah. Oh, KB Security used to head security operations against Mask to Mask. What? Really? Yeah. And after screwing up so many times, his reputation really took a nosedive. It really was Bullard who sent Ron the blackmail letter, huh? Look, there's his jacket. Wow. This is really something else. And for a security guard office, this sh it sure doesn't feel very secure. Maybe security guard. Uh-oh. I just remembered. Larry might be. Hey, Nick. What's up? Ugh, so he is here. Yo, how's it hanging, dude? You got my sweet little- and you got my sweet little Maya with you, too. Hi, Larry. Here I was w working my fingers to the bone. And in walks an angel. I got no problems with the daytime date, it's all good. No, that's not what we're here for. We're investigating the Bullard murder case. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, that's right. You're a lawyer, aren't you? So hopelessly clueless. Well, if it's about the murder case, boy, have I got some good info for you. Really? What is it? Hmm. Well, I don't mind sharing it with my sweet little Maya. But Nick, here's a different story. But Larry, I thought you were old. S you two were old school buddies. That was then. This is now. This is my partner's seat. Partner? Well, that's what I call her. She's my superior, actually. Kind of a weird old lady. Um, there's tea spilled over that machine, you know. Oh, don't worry about it. Just the other day, I spilled some chocolate milk on mine. It still works fine, more or less. You really know how to build them, I guess. Something's written on this poster in fine print. A guard's five commandments. Wow, this sounds serious. Let's see what it says. Number one, obey thy superior. Number two, respect thy superior. Three, smile at thy superior. And four, salute thy superior. And five, buy donuts for thy superior upon command. It's signed, Wendy Oldbag, head supervisor. Just one tough old bird, let me tell you. Cross her and you'll come face to face with a real genuine ray gun. Yeah, sounds scary, all right. Well, fortunately she's on vacation, so that's why I'm so relaxed right now. Hey, Larry, that's your jacket, isn't it? That's right. Um... Did you know you hung it right on top of some kind of lever? Yeah, sure. I was told to never, ever touch that lever. She scowled and huffed at me. And something terrible will happen if you do. Got it, Greenhorn? And so, why hang your jacket on such an important lever? Because it got me curious. If the jacket's weight pulls the lever down, that's what they call an accident. Doesn't the suspense just kill you? Don't you want to know what'll happen, huh? It's true. It's killing me, too. What about you, Nick? Yeah, but for a different reason. Wow, take a look at these things here. Hey, hey, Larry, what are they? Hmm. You say, hmm? Hey, man. It's not like I have to know what they are to do my job. I... I always thought they were some kind of decoration or something. Oh boy. How did this guy ever get a job here anyway? Hey, Nick, you see all these uh, spots where the security cameras are? I put up like... <laughs> this place is great for playing games. I really want to steal the CEO's chair. 
specifically because I want to build myself a gaming setup down here. Gosh. Nine monitor setup. How did this guy ever get a job here anyway? That's my workstation. Pretty cool, huh? Keep a steady eye on the monitors and use that mic for communicating. He can analyze so many replays on these monitors. Nick, I use these monitors for my video editing. I'm gonna be famous on YouTube. I've been really getting into this game called League of Legends. <laughs> Look at all this equipment! It must be hard to operate. No biggie. I think there's an instruction manual somewhere in this room. It's somewhere. Instruction manual? What are you gonna do in an emergency? Well, I guess I'd start by calmly looking for the instruction manual. During that time, my partner, the old lady, would calmly look for her reading glasses. That's what a security professional calls... your er, professionals call teamwork. And my M pearls could run this place better. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? Wait, did he say that out loud or did she just read Phoenix's thoughts as usual? Yeah, she read Phoenix's thoughts as usual. These screens show what's going on all over the building. Everywhere. It's my job to keep a steady eye on them. All of them. I wouldn't sound so smug if I were you. Which one of these is your Discord monitor, Larry? Oh, I put my Discord directly in the center. Can you watch regular TV on these two? Anyone would sit here and watch TV instead of working, it's Larry. Hey Maya, I'm a pro, okay? Besides, you can't get regular TV on it. And how do you know that, Larry? Because that was my first bit of investigation, if you know what I mean. I know what you're thinking. It was a professional investigation, right? Larry 100% would be the person that puts his Discord monitor in the middle. He'd have like he'd have a whole bunch. He'd have different tabs open on every one of these monitors. What's this good info you were talking about, Larry? Hey, I'm a guard! A pro! I can't just give away information for free. I'd put it- you'd put it in the bottom right. So, here's the weird thing. When I'm streaming, my monitor setup is actually really weird because I actually genuinely... Like, okay, not when I'm streaming. When I'm streaming, I have my OBS on my first monitor. Then I have, um, the stream layout, or not stream layout, the, uh, what's it called? Dashboard? Stream manager? Open on my middle monitor. And I have my Discord open on my drawing tablet. But, uh, most of the time when I'm not actively drawing, I don't have my drawing tablet turned on. So, technically speaking, most of the time I have my Discord in the middle monitor, in quotation marks, because I don't have my third monitor turned on all the time. That's a bribe? I thought professionals were more, I don't know, honest? Can you talk to him, Maya? Larry, tell us already, what's the good info? Hey, I like that. This kitten's got some claws. Don't... Larry is a Discord mod. Larry is a Discord moderator. Okay, you really want to know? Yes, yes, so tell me. Okay, so the thing is, Ron Delight was an employee here. And naturally, since I'm a pro, I looked into his background. 
Follow me? Yes, you're a pro. I follow you. Go on. Well, one year ago, Ron's light was fired. There was no warning at all. It just happened all of a sudden. I know this is a small company, but I think that was pretty awful. I guess he must have done something bad to have gotten fired like that. Like, maybe skipping out on work to go pick up hot chicks or something. No, that's just you. So what's it like to be a part-time security guard? Let me tell you, it's tough. Well, you know me. I get by all right, I guess. And first, I have to keep my eye on those monitors all the time. Monitors? Also, completely random thing. Speaking of art, I spent almost the entire day other than what the time I was at work doing art today. I made very large progress on the thing I'm working on. There are security cameras set in each room around the building. It's really hard. Sometimes I feel like my eyes are gonna fall out. Oh. If I see something sus suspicious, I have to contact one of the teams. What teams? Security teams for this company. They're supposedly the best in the business. But I'm no amateur either. So if it's something small, I don't bother calling them. So in other words, you basically watch TV screens all day long. The only hint I can give you as to the, uh, what I'm working on is I'm working on... Uh... The the the, uh, the hint phrase for what I'm working on is a uh, zappy. You were in this office when the murder took place, weren't you? Why do you say that? This is just a part-time job for me, and I can't operate the equipment, and I'm dumb. Even if this is part-time and you're dumb, you're still in charge of security here. Hey, give me a break. Don't try to pin the whole thing on me. It's not fair, Nick. Huh? I don't think you can expect someone like him to take respon to take any responsibility. Anyway, the point is you were here that night, right? Great. Oh no. I knew something smelled bad and it was the butts after all. Well, it's like I always say. That was then, and this is now, okay? Looks like I'm gonna have to break his psyche locks after all. Okay, what is our question for the psyche locks here? Night of the Crime. On the night of the crime, were you working hard like you were supposed to? What? Huh? Uh, of course I was. Why wouldn't I have been? Didn't you sneak out of work just yesterday to go see Miss Delight? Uh, but that was that, and this is this. Is there any chance that you snuck out of work last night, too? Never! I didn't sneak out, I'll tell you what. I'd even bet you a dollar. A dollar? Wow! Now that's confidence! What's with that drenched in the rain puppy look on your face. Do you have any evidence that I left my position, or are you just pulling my chain? Evidence that Larry was not manning his station when the murder happened is... This wallet. You knew about this, right? I've never seen it before. Liar. <laughs> how does the uh, how does the wallet conversation from SpongeBob go? <laughs> you hand delivered this wallet to Miss Delight just yesterday. Give me a break. You can't expect me to remember every little thing that happens. Well, I do expect you to remember something that happened just yesterday. What time was it when you found this wallet? I guess it was around 1 in the morning, on the first floor of our company building. 1 o'clock in the morning? That's right. In other words, Larry, at the time of the murder, you were away from the security guard office. Ugh. 
Yeah, but... There's something you didn't think about. What's that? My shift that day didn't start until 10 p.m. The murderer might have snuck in before then. What do you mean by that? If the murderer had snuck in before 10 p.m., then it wasn't my fault. It's the fault of the guy whose shift it was before mine. Now I have the feeling he still doesn't get the seriousness of this. Listen up, Larry. You know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the killer snuck into the CEO's office after 10 p.m. during your shift. Larry, when you use this keycard, does it leave a record? Yeah, it does. But I can't show the record to just anyone, you know? That keycard data was already made public in the trial today. What? I didn't know that. Any kind of request for that info is supposed to go through me. Why does that sound a bit arrogant coming from a part-time guard? Anyway, according to the date, or er, according to the data, the door in the CEO's office was opened with this card. Furthermore, it was most definitely used at 1 a.m., the time of the murder. No way! Yes, someone used this to get into the CEO's office. It happened at 1 a.m. on the night of the crime, right in the middle of your shift. Oh. Larry, you can't duck your responsibility this time. Yeah, no! I knew it. It's all my fault. It's my fault that the boss was killed. My fault. Larry. There was nothing I could do. I have important issues to deal with too, man. What happened that night anyway? Uh, my Donna happened. Huh? Your Donna? I got a bad feeling about this. Yeah, my Donna called and said I have to talk to you right away. I went to see her, and he was standing right there next to her. Um, who was? Her new boyfriend. It was like some horrible joke. Before I knew what was going on, the guy socked me right in the kisser. Normally, I'm the one that does the punching, isn't that right, Maya? Y yeah So is that why you left the security guard office? Ugh, I'm sorry. It's all my fault. How can I ever make it up, Nick? What can I do? What? <laughs> He's curled up on the floor, crying like a baby. Oh boy. Nick! Is there anything I can do? Anything, just name it! I'll do whatever I have to to make it up for it. I swear I will! Harry. Hey, Nick, as long as he- as he's offering, why don't you show him the evidence we've got? He's right. Maybe we'll get at least one bit of useful information from him. Nick. Um, I think you know about how much I want to help you guys, but I really don't know what to say about that. What is it, Nick? It's just that he seems so, I don't know, pleasant. Um, the buzzer in the CEO's office is directly connected to this room, right? That's right. Just like my heart is connected to yours, Maya. Huh? Go ahead, Maya. Press the buzzer in your heart. I promise I'll come running to your rescue like the professional guard I am. Wow. That was pretty good. Nah, don't give him credit for that. <laughs> Thanks, I try. Do you think you could tell us more about the buzzer now? Yes, please. Please tell us. Okay, I guess so. Prepare to be wowed. Um, I accidentally pressed the buzzer earlier. Yeah, I heard it. So that was you, huh? You're a security guard, aren't you? Why didn't you come to the CEO's office? Well, this is the third floor of the basement. The CEO's office is on the first floor. I thought it would be a good idea to adopt a wait-and-see approach. Plus, there's a police detective here, right? 
I didn't think it was necessary. As if he's trying to win an award for the laziest person on the planet. Um, let's get back to talking about the night of the murder, okay? Is it true that the buzzer didn't go off that night? Must be a record, right? You must have had a look at that, right? Of course I did. I couldn't possibly have made a mistake either. Do you think you could take just one more look for me? Pretty please? Oh, okay. I just can't say no to you, Maya. What do you think, Nick? Probably right. I don't think even Larry could make a m Ugh! Wh what is it? What's wrong? I, I made a mistake! Huh? B but how Can't be. It's impossible. Okay, enough already. What about the records? That night, it went off just once, in the morning, at around 1 a.m. 1 a.m.? Th that's when the murder happened! R really? Are you serious? That's terrible, it can't be. Gosh, I'm getting very tired of doing Larry's voice. Larry, a mistake? No way! The treasures of Karine exhibit is all ruined now. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, it's just so sad. This was our big chance for everyone to learn about spirit channeling. It can cheer up somehow. Well, now that we've got the sacred urn back, maybe they can reopen it? R really Sure, maybe we can label it the urn of Mask to Mask's desires. That'd probably attract a lot of attention. Whoa! Whoa, whoa! That's brilliant, Nick! We could- and we- or we could clean up and be filthy rich! Woohoo! Wow, that was surprisingly easy. Oh, it's you, Mr. Wright. It's Andrews. What she's still hanging around down, around down here for? Um, so, how's it going? What about the sacred urn? The urn? Oh, that? It's been taken care of already. What do you mean, oh, that? Been taken care of? Do you mean it's been found? Yes. It was brought in during the trial today. Wow, really? You really are the greatest, Mr. Wright. Mr. Wright had nothing to do with it. He was Mask to Mask's wife that found it. Well, anyway, I'm... I'm so relieved. Is this the same dialogue? This is the same dialogue. I just heard all about it on the news. So that detective was actually the thief all along. Looks that way, that way right now. It, it's my fault. I'm the one who ended up hiring Damask to guard the treasures. Don't blame yourself. You were just doing your job. Hey, Nick. If she wants to apologize, you should let her. So, when was it that you hired Detective Atme again? About 20 days ago. And when was it that Damask's calling card arrived? And that was about 10 days ago. He sent a calling card to the very place he was hired to guard. I guess that's it then. Detective Atme must have really wanted the Sacred Urn after all. So. What? So, Mask Mast murdered someone as well? Well, that's how things look right now. Yes, but I thought that he was here stealing the urn at the time. Well, we're talking about a criminal mastermind, so anything's possible. 
Nick, let's get down to business already. On the night of the theft, did you notice anything suspicious about Detective Atme? No, I couldn't have. After all, he was hidden the entire time. I never even caught a glimpse of him. Claims that's the way he always operates. And that's just what he says so he can have an alibi when he commits the thefts himself. Yeah, he was caught in the cr in the crime scene photo, dressed up as Mask to Mask pretty well. I'm so glad you got your sacred urn back. Yes, but there's still something that bothers me about it. W what is it? Not exactly sure. But somehow, the urn that came back seems different. R really You wouldn't know anything about that, would you, Miss Andrews? N no I don't know anything. W why would I? I don't think we have the urn as evidence currently. Psyche locks. What do you think this means, Nick? He's the person that holds the secret to the mystery of the sacred urn. Our very own Miss Andrews. Yeah, we don't have the urn currently. Is literally crawling with cops. What did you expect? Now that they know he was actually masked to mask. This this must be incredibly embarrassing for them, don't you think? Yeah, I guess they're trying to make up for it by tearing the place apart. Hey, I just noticed. Dumb shoes nowhere to be seen. Well, he's a homicide detective. He's probably working on the murder case. Was any in charge of the mask to mask investigation all the way up until yesterday? Well, a murder case is a lot more exciting, isn't it? He'd say something like, There's nothing like a good murder case, pal. Thanks for the quality of the impression, but I'm not sure Gumshoe has a bloodlust, Maya. <laughs> That's a really good quote. I like that quote. <laughs> like, gen genuinely, that quote almost reads like something that, um... It reads like something that would show up in, like, a fan game, you know? Uh, Mr. Wright. Mr. Delight. Did they finish their interrogation? Y yes, but please don't leave me alone anymore. Mr. Delight, you lied to us before, didn't you? Well, uh, you see... On the same night, the sacred urn was stolen from Lobby Taylor department store. The blackmail letter you got summoned you to KB Security to hand over some money. And then, that's where the CEO, Kane Bullard, was murdered. There's only one run to light, am I right? So the only question is, where were you that night? This time I want to hear the whole truth. Life depends on it. Your life depends on it. If you lie to me again, I will kill you on the spot, Run. Do not defy me. Okay. Okay. Give me just a sec and we'll find someone to raid.
Okay, so yeah, um, exclamation point Discord if you want to join the Discord, exclamation point socials if you want to check out, um, mainly the VODs channel. Otherwise... Let's raid Coldy. It's been a hot minute. So yeah, um, thank you all so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. Uh, I should hopefully be back with more of this tomorrow, given that my voice doesn't give out and that I'm not dying from work, but, um, yeah. So, uh, I guess have a good one and take care.